Well, hi, everyone. This is Jerry Doggett along with Vin Scully. Here we are at San Diego Stadium for the game between the Los Angeles Dodgers and the San Diego Padres. This broadcast is presented with the permission of the Los Angeles Dodgers Incorporated. Any reproduction or rebroadcast without the express written permission of the Los Angeles Dodgers Incorporated is prohibited. Well, it's a warm one today. The Dodgers and the San Diego Padres meeting for the final time in San Diego Stadium. And it's hot. The temperature should get around the 90 to 100 degree mark here for the ball game this afternoon. The pitchers will be left-hander Claude Osteen and right-hander Steve Arlen. This is the final meeting of the year for the two clubs in San Diego. They have a two-game series later in the week in Los Angeles on Wednesday and Thursday. The Dodgers have won seven in a row here in San Diego and are now trying to sweep the series from the Padres and all of the ball games played here. We'll have the starting lineups and other pregame notes coming up for you right after this message. Move them out. They're moving, they're moving, you can feel it in the air. They're moving, they're moving, there's excitement everywhere. Your Ford dealer is making his move. The savvy buyer knows the showdown in the showroom means everything goes. So move on in and make your deal. You'll move out way ahead. It's the buyer's time of year at your Ford dealer spread. They're moving, they're moving, it's for clearance time and so. They're moving, they're moving, these new Ford, we gotta go. We got thoroughbreds on wheels. We got this year's biggest deals. It's the kind of clearance and say you dream about. The kind of sale that clears the lots because the buyer calls the shots. Your four dealers really got to move them out. Move them out, move them out. This is the buyer's time of year. Move them out, move them out. If you want to get one of the year's best deals on one of the year's best sellers, see your good friend who sells Fords. He's moving them out right now. Number 21. The temperature here at San Diego Stadium is over 100 degrees on the field. The umpires now will hold their meeting at home plate. Coach Dave Garcia and Danny Ozark will come out with the umpires, and we will have Doug Harvey, Jerry Dale, Augie Donatelli, and Ed Vargo as the men in blue. They had a football game here last night, but you couldn't tell it. The ball field has been put in excellent condition, and the stands moved back. All of the white lines have been erased. And it's back to a baseball normalcy. Here are the batting orders now for the ball game. For the Dodgers, Maury Wills leading off at shortstop. Bill Buckner will be in right field. Willie Davis in center. Richie Allen at first base. Willie Crawford will bat fifth and play left field. Steve Garvey will be at third base. The catcher for the Dodgers is Tom Haller. At second base, Bobby Valentine. And doing the pitching will be Claude Osteen. Osteen, 13 and 10 on the year, is 2 and 0 this year and 6 and 3 lifetime with San Diego. He has a 3.44 earned run average. For San Diego, Enzo Hernandez at shortstop. Don Mason at second base. Johnny Jeter will be in center field. Nate Colbert at first base. Cito Gaston in center in right field. Gaston batting fifth, playing right. Ivan Morrell will be in left field. The catcher is Bob Barton. At third base will be Tommy Dean. And doing the pitching is right-hander Steve Arlen. Arlen, 9 and 16 on the year, and he has an earned run average of 3.35. Dean batting eighth, and Arlen batting in the ninth spot. Arlen is 0-1 with the Dodgers this year, and 0-2 lifetime. Now the conference at home plate is broken up, waiting for the San Diego Padres to take the field. It's very warm here, and that has certainly held down the crowd. One time when a nice day has really hurt because of the intense heat, a lot of folks are trying to find some shade, and we have a lot of folks who are tucked back up on the other decks underneath, so we'll have a nice turnout, but we could have had more had it not been quite so hot. And for a heat wave in San Diego, that's unusual because they have the best weather in the world. Now the Padres take the field. The Dodgers go into the ball game. They are three games behind the Giants, and the Giants are winning in Atlanta by a score of 4-1 to in the sixth inning. The Giants scored four times in the first inning, and they have taken the lead there over Atlanta. We'll be underway from San Diego in a moment. Now here is our national anthem sung by Jerry Vale. We'll be underway in a few moments now as right-hander Steve Arlen goes behind the mound, getting set to step on top and begin his warm-ups. Young Steve has won nine games and has lost 16 on the year. He stands 6'3", weighs 195 pounds. He was born in Seattle, Washington, now lives in Columbus, Ohio. 
and he is rated as one of the most promising pitchers in the Padre organization. He won his first game last September, a seven-hit shutout at Atlanta. His record last year, one win, no losses with the Padres, and he was at Salt Lake City where he won five and lost seven. Harlan this year has had a chance to do a lot of work. He has uh, worked 206 innings and has allowed 197 hits. His earned run average is 3.35, and he's won nine and lost 16. He has started 32 games, and only Kirby has started more. Roberts has started 30. So Arlen has been a regular pitcher all year for the San Diego Padres, and he is 0-1 with the Dodgers this year, 0-2 lifetime. And on the scoreboard, they're in the seventh inning in Atlanta, and the Giants, who have lost seven straight, are leading Atlanta by a score of 4-1. to one. That's Cumberland and Stone. Herbal relieved in the first, Barber in the sixth. Fuentes and Bonds opened the game with home runs for the Giants. Perez had a home run for Atlanta in the third inning with none on. All right, it's we're all set. Time to play ball. The Dodgers and the Padres, and the Dodgers now trying for a sweep in San Diego for the year. They are 8-0 and here against the Padres, and they start off now against Steve Arlen, hard-throwing right-hander. Will stepping into the batter's box, hitting 285. Ready to play the first the final game and the first pitch underway. Fastball is high and inside ball. 1-1 one, one ball and no strikes. Right enter Steve Arlen working. The Dodgers are three behind. When they left here the other night, they were not sure how they were going to make out, but Atlanta lost, uh, won the game from the Giants and then won again last night. So the Giants dropped two straight in Atlanta. Here's a fastball for a strike to Wills, and the count levels off at 1-1. One and one. So the Giants, who had not lost but one game all year in Atlanta, have lost two in a row. Time called now, and the plate umpire, Harvey, is pointing out towards center field. And we have one of the ushers going up the steps there for some reason. Or there's a gate open or what in the outfield. But the umpire, Harvey, is looking out towards center field. Maybe there's some kind of a bright object out there. Someone flashing a mirror or a reflection off of a light or a camera. But Harvey now turns and goes back behind the plate and apparently is all right. Here's the 1-1 pitch to Wills. Low and inside for a ball, and the count goes to 2-1. The Dodgers are minus Pete Mickelson now. Pete has not been feeling well lately, and he has been placed in St. John's Hospital in Santa Monica and will undergo a complete physical, so he is out of action for a few days. Here's a bouncing ball towards second. Don Mason there, a nice big hop goes to first. Wills is out, one away. It is a warm day here in San Diego, as it is all over Southern California, and the heat may take its toll on the athletes out there today. Of course... The modern-day baseball player now conditioned to play most of the time at night. And boy, when you pop up on a day game and the temperature on the field is over the 100-degree mark, in fact, about 105 or 6, then that really makes a difference, and especially on the pitchers. Even in the pregame workouts, and there were no batting practice or infield drills today, and just playing a little pepper games, boy, you can work up a real head of steam. Here's a fastball for a strike. Billy Buckner in the batter's box, hitting 283. Bill with five home runs and 37 runs batted in. Getting a chance to play now as the opposition comes out with the right-hand pitcher. Off-speed pitch grounded to the right side. Mason on the outfield grass up. Throws in time, and it's two up. So two up and two down, and Willie Davis, the batter, hitting 312, five home runs, and 63 runs batted in. A final in the American League. Cleveland beat New York 5-2. to two. McDowell, the winner, and Peterson, the loser. Willie Davis, the batter. Richie Allen on deck. The Dodgers have won five straight. They have won 10 out of their last 12 games and are trying to keep the momentum to keep the pressure on the Giants. And they'll meet them head on tomorrow night. There's a fastball high and away, ball one. One ball, no strikes. The Dodgers and the Giants meet two more times. Tomorrow night and Tuesday night in San Francisco. The Dodgers trail by three, so they're going to have to have some help somewhere along the line if they're going to overhaul the Giants. But tomorrow they get a chance to do something themselves. There's a big curve, swung on and missed, and it's a one ball, one strike count. The Padres, who last year had pretty good hitting and not too much pitching, have reversed that procedure this year. They have pretty good pitching, and their hitting has slumped off a little. Team batting average of 233. Davis swings at a fastball, and it's one ball and one strike. The team ERA is down to 3.30. And to give you an idea how that compares, the Dodger team ERA is 3.22, so they're almost identical in the ERA on the pitching staff. A one ball, two strike count to Davis. Now Arlen delivers, a bouncer towards second base. Mason's going to get them all. 
play to first in time, and the side retired one, two, three. So the Padres will come up. Dodgers down in order to score at the end of a half inning of play. Dodgers nothing, and San Diego coming to bat. When an athlete hears the fans yell, charge, he usually puts a little more spirit into his performance. When you say charge with the Union 76 credit card, you get a more spirited performance, too, because Union 76 is the first major gasoline company throughout the West to offer you revolving credit. And revolving credit means that now you can charge the tires, batteries, and other automotive accessories you need with no fuss. No complicated contracts to sign. No three-, six-, or twelve-month deadlines to meet. Why, it's just like shopping with a department store credit card. And in addition to the fine products and services at your Union Oil dealers. A Union 76 credit card is good at such places as major car rental agencies and over 500 motels and inns. Pick up a credit card application from your Union 76 dealer and get the spirit. The spirit of 76 lives at Union Oil. Paul Osteen warming up now with catcher Tom Haller. Allen is at first. Valentine at second. Wills at short. Garvey's at third. Crawford in left. Davis in center. Buckner in right. Wes Parker was to start the game today, but Wes has been under the weather a little bit, so he could not make it. And Buckner will play in right field, and Crawford will play in left. Warm day in San Diego. And for the Padres now, it'll be Hernandez, Mason, and Jeter against Claude Osteen. Osteen, 13 and 10 on the year, 2 and 0 this year, and 6 and 3 lifetime against San Diego. All right, Osteen all set with his warm up tosses, and he's ready to go to play now. Number 11, Enzo. Enzo Hernandez stepping into the batter's box. Osteen beat the Padres 9 to 2 on April the 10th. He went nine innings, and on June the 26th, he beat them 4 to 2, and he went eight and a third innings there. He's allowed four earned runs against the Padres in 17 and the third innings. Okay, all set. Bottom of the first. The Dodgers went down in order 1-2-3 with ground balls to the second baseman. Enzo Hernandez now to face Osteen. Tomorrow night, it'll be Singer and Marischal in a rematch at Candlestick, and then on Tuesday, Downing against Perry. Now the pitch on the way to Hernandez, and the fastball is high outside ball one. The Dodgers are three back, and they have not been three back, as close as three back, since way back in April. Twice they were as close as three and a half on July the 6th, on August the 12th. And after today, they'll either be four or two. Four or three. Here's a swing and a fly ball to center. And Davis right there to handle it for the out. So two, three, or four after today's play. Here's Don Mason coming on, hitting 214. One home run and nine runs batted in. Left hand hitting second baseman. One out as Hernandez flied to center field. Final game of the series, and the Dodgers here trying for a sweep on the Padres for the year. They are 8-0 and here, 4-3 and with the Padres in Dodger Stadium. Fastball is a strike, it is 0-1. The Dodgers and the Padres resume their action on Wednesday at Dodger Stadium. They play Wednesday and Thursday. And then the Braves come to Dodger Stadium Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday a doubleheader. So a week from today, our last doubleheader of the year at Dodger Stadium, and boy, that ought to be a big one. The Braves are playing great ball, of course, now. And they'll be in there trying to knock off the Dodgers. The Dodgers have seven left with the Braves, and they have had a tough time beating the Braves this year. There's a bouncer over the mound, behind second, into center field. It's a base hit for Mason. So Don Mason singles on a bouncer up the middle. And that brings to bat John Jeter, the center fielder. The Dodgers against the Braves are three and two in Los Angeles, but one and five in Atlanta, and four and seven overall. So they they really have to turn things around against Atlanta in the seven remaining games. Final score, the Cardinals knocked off the Cubs today, four to nothing on Bob Gibson's four hitter. And the bottom of the seventh in Atlanta, and the Giants have scored four in the first, still lead four to one. Jeter takes a fastball, high ball one. The game in Chicago was Gibson against Holson with an hour and 48 minutes. I don't think that's the quickest in the year of the of the year in the league, but it's very close. Hour 34, St. Louis at San Diego. Bob Gibson, I bet you pitched that one too. He pitches a lot of games under two hours. 1-0 pitch on the way. They pitch out of no movement. Mason not going. So the Dodgers guessing hit and run then. And Haller called for the pitch out. The Padres have a man on. 
Mason at first base, Allen holding him on. John Jeter, the newest of the Padres, right hand hitter, came from the Pittsburgh Pirate organization. Takes one low for a ball, and the count goes to two balls, no strikes. 2-0 the count to Jeter. Singer against Marisol, that's a rematch tomorrow. And then Downing and Perry on Tuesday, both games on television and radio. Tomorrow evening, game time's 8 o'clock with warm-up at 7.40. Three balls and no strikes now to Jeter. Hosteen set the look in the pitch on the way, and it's in for strike three and one. The Dodgers with five straight have won seven of eight and ten out of 12. Their longest win streak of the year was six back in April. The Giants are on a seven-game losing streak, and they earlier in the year had a nine-game winning streak. Three and one. The look, the runner going, swung on a drive in the left center field. It's going to be in for trouble. All the way to the wall. Here comes Mason. He's going to score. Davis plays the ball off the wall, and Jeter is in with a double. Padres lead one to nothing. So John Jeter on a 3-1 pitch. Doubles in the left center field. The ball went through all the way to the wall. Mason scored easily, and Jeter puts the Padres in front. And Osteen, who has been under the weather with the flu, is in trouble here in the very first inning. Osteen lately has had some first inning problems. He had a bad outing in New York at the start. And he's trying to avoid that now. And here's Nate Colbert at bat. So the big guys start to come up now for the Padres, and they jump off to a one-run lead. All right, Colbert at bat, 270 average with 24 homers and 72 runs batted in. Osteen checks, looks, delivers. A swing and a miss at a good curveball. It is strike one. Jeter at second base with a double to drive in the run. Mason bounced the single over the mound and scored on Jeter's two-base hit. Colbert leans back on that right leg. Here's the pitch on the way. Swung on and foul, tipped at the plate. Strike two to Big Nate. He is the leading home run hitter for the Padres and one of the leaders in the league with 24. Right-hand batter, big first baseman, Nate Colbert. Strike two the count. Jeter away from second base. They play Colbert to pull. Osteen trying to get the second out of the first inning. Padres lead one to nothing. Steve Arlen working for San Diego today. Hard throwing big right-hander. The 0-2 look, and here's the pitch. Looped over short. It'll be a base hit. That'll get another run in. And Colbert is at first base, and the Padres lead two to nothing. He hit a curveball around the knees and just looped it over Wills in the left field. So that gets Jeter home to score. San Diego two, the Dodgers nothing. And now Gaston will be the batter. And Osteen is in early trouble and will have some bullpen activity. Doyle Alexander will be the first man up. He was due to pitch on Thursday against the Padres in Los Angeles. But he might get an early call here today. As I told you, Osteen has been... I don't know whether it's a clue or what, but Todd has not been well since uh, back in July in New York. He's not physically strong. Here's the pitch, a fastball for strike. Oh, and when he tried to get a curveball to Colbert, and it was around the knees, and Colbert looped at the left field, kind of like a tennis shot. Gaston waiting, 231 average, 16 homers, and 57 runs batted in, and the Padres lead 2 to nothing. Final game of the season between the two here. There are two more in Los Angeles. Gaston takes low with a fastball, one and one. One ball, one strike. First inning, and San Diego out in front. And the Giants are leading Atlanta four to one. And they're in the seventh inning at Atlanta. Now Claude ready to go again, delivers to Gaston. Ground ball to shortstop, could be two. Wills to Valentine, on to Allen, in time to double play to retire the side. But the Padres in the first inning show two runs on three hits, none left on, and the score at the end of one inning of play, San Diego two and the Dodgers nothing. Schlitz, Milwaukee in the world. <laughs>
only go one time around. So you reach for all the gusto you can. Even in the beer you drink. Settle for less and you settle for nothing. When you're out of Schlitz, you're out of beer. The Dodgers down by two now start with Allen, Crawford, and Garvey against right-hander Steve Arlen. He got the side out in order on ground balls to second base in the first inning. Big Steve, 9 and 16 on the year. He was first drafted by Detroit, but did not sign, and then was drafted by Philadelphia in the special phase. He began his career at Bakersfield in the California League, and he won seven and lost six in 1966. Here's the pitch to Richie Allen. Curveball is down low, one ball to no strikes. Arlen this year had spring training for the first time since he began a, a, his career as a pro player. He has been going to dental school in the offseason and always missed spring training. Curveball is high, ball two, two balls and no strikes. He's going to Ohio State, and he'll be a dentist who's practicing pitching. So he's trying to pull a few teeth out there now for the Dodgers in their charge after the Giants. Arlen pitching to Richie Allen, 2-0 pitch. A swing and a miss at a high fastball. Two and one. That one down the pipe around letter high. Allen went after it. Steve Arlen into the windup and the pitch to Allen on the corner for strike two, 0 and 2. Arlen has pitched a no hitter. That was in the minor leagues in 1967 at Reading in the Eastern League. 6 3, 195 pounder, a 2 2 count to Richie Allen. Now the windup and the pitch on the way. Pop fly along the right field line coming over is Gaston near the Dodger bullpen. Now just inside the line makes a one hand catch for the out. So Allen flies to right one away. And the batter will be Willie Crawford hitting 281 with eight home runs and 35 runs batted in. Willie Crawford. Friends, if your car takes regular gasoline, chances are you can use new low lead regular 76. So join the fight against air pollution and fill up with low lead regular 76 gasoline at your union oil dealers. Here's Crawford at bat. Arlen's pitch to him. Fastball low and inside ball one. We have a group of Marines, and I assume they are from nearby Camp Pendleton, and they are in the stands along the first base side, and they have organized cheers that you will hear throughout the ball game. The 1-0 pitch to Crawford. Swung on and missed a good fastball in around the knees, and it is one and one. Willie Crawford, who was hitting over 300 for most of the year, has tailed off a little bit now and is being platooned with Manny Moda. Moda has a bad leg, and he will not play today. Could see service as a pinch hitter. There's a ground ball squirted towards shortstop. Hernandez up, his throw across in time, and Crawford is out on a close play at first base. Steve Garvey coming on, hitting 230. Seven homers and 76 runs batted in. It is a warm day here, as it is where you are, I'm sure. The other man turned on the heat for the last couple of days. It is about 106 degrees on the floor of the stadium here. And the downtown temperature will approach the 100-degree marker, which is rare for San Diego. They usually have an ocean breeze to keep things nice and cool. First pitch high and inside. One ball, no strikes to Garvey. We're in the second inning. Pitch on the way. Garvey swings, pops it up on the right side. First baseman Colbert coming in on the grass, waiting. And the side is retired. One, two, three. Arlen gets him out in order again. Three up and three down. And the score at the end of an inning and a half. San Diego two, the Dodgers nothing. Having taken so many road trips through the years, flying has certainly become routine. It's sort of the way shoppers reach for Farmer John Bacon. Buying it has become almost routine. Now, Farmer John Bacon has won over so many families here in the West, you sometimes wonder if there's any other kind. But maybe you're a holdout. Perhaps for some reason or other, you still haven't tried it. Well, may we suggest that just out of curiosity, you find out why Farmer John Bacon is our most popular bacon by far, out of curiosity, mind you. Oh, I could tell you that Farmer John Bacon is made from strictly fresh eastern corn-fed pork, dressed fresh right here in the West, and we could tell you that it's smoked like no other over native western wood to give it a marvelous western flavor. But as I say, I'd rather you tried Farmer John Bacon simply out of curiosity. Believe me, you'll find that it won't be a case of your curiosity getting the better of you, but you're getting something better because of your curiosity. Farmer John Bacon. 
Friends, some great prizes coming your way at Dodger Fan Appreciation Night, Thursday, September 30th, final game of the homestand. Union All Auto Script, Farmer John Hams, 15 dressmaker zigzag sewing machines from sewing distributors, an AM FM 8 band radio from Henry Rotor Imports, 10 copies of the new baseball book, The Great Game, from Pickwick Bookstores, 10 baseballs autographed by the Apollo 15 crew. These and many more gifts at Fan Appreciation Night, September 30th. Here's Ivan Morrell, the left fielder, coming on to face Osteen now. Claude yielded two runs in the first inning. Osteen, 13 on 10 on the air, delivers now, and the pitch is high on outside ball one. Osteen, a 344 earned run average, has worked 238 innings. That's tops on the team. Downing is two behind, and Sutton is six behind. There's a swing and a miss at a good curve, one and one. One ball, one strike. Osteen checking signs. Morrell, Barton, and Dean. Next three do up here. Now the pitch on the way. Fastball is low. Ball two, and it's two and one. Two balls and a strike. Morrell wears number 20. Seven home runs. The Padres have hit 87 home runs as a team. There's a pop-up on the right side of the home plate foul. Haller and now Allen going after it, and it's going to be Haller makes the catch for the out. Haller had to lunge back, battling the sun as he went after that foul ball, a tough play. So Haller handles it for the first out, and catcher Bob Barton comes to bat. Bright sunshine, and it's coming in at a little bit of an angle. Off to our right. Here's Barton stepping in, hitting 241. Five home runs, 21 runs batted in. Now the pitch on the way. Lined in the right field, the base hit. So Barton singles sharply to right. That is the fourth hit given up by Osteen. It brings to bat the shortstop, Tommy Dean. Dean, hitting 105. Tommy Dean. Barton now has a seven-game hitting streak going with that base hit to right field. Dean at bat hasn't had a chance to play much lately. Hernandez has been playing most of the shortstop. Gary Jestat, who is the regular third baseman now, is in military service. The Marines give the go chant for Barton. He will not uh, run too much. Here's a curve low for a ball. One ball and no strikes. Barton has not stolen a base this year. He's been caught four times and perhaps most of the times on busted hit and run plays. One ball and no strikes. One out and one on, and the Padres batting and lead two to nothing. We're playing in the second inning. Here's the pitch. Curve high, and it is ball two. 2-0 two the count. Haller, I think, uh, wants to say something to Osteen. Walks out in front of the plate. And now turns and comes on back. They're in the eighth inning in Atlanta. Four to one. The Giants lead the Braves. The Braves have won two. The Giants trying to salvage the finale before going home to play the Dodgers tomorrow night. Now the 2-0 look, and here's the pitch on the way. Ground ball back to the middle. Base hit the set of fifth for Tommy Dean. Barton goes to second and stops there, and Osteen is in trouble again. And Darl Alexander hops up off the bullpen bench to go out and warm up. Walter Austin told us on the pregame show that he didn't know how long Osteen could go, especially on a hot day, and uh, for the fact that Osteen had not been feeling well for the last month. Now, Aller goes to the mound. He might have been sent there by the bench. Tommy Dean is sharp single to center, following Barton single into right field. Two on, five hits now for the Padres against Osteen. And the Dodgers can't waste too much time in a ball game like this against a hard-throwing pitcher like Steve Arlen. They're not going to have too many runs against him, so they have to conserve all they can. So Aller is talking to Osteen at the mound, and Doyle Alexander is warming up down in the bullpen. Doug Harvey goes out now to try to speed things along, and Haller walks slowly back behind the plate. No one is going to move too fast today here on this hot day. Haller looks down toward the bullpen. Now comes back down behind the plate. And the infield is going to move in looking for a bunt. One out, Arlen the pitcher is at bat. He hits right-handed and has a 134 batting average with nine hits. So he's not a bad hitter. Here's the look. They look for the bunt. He's around a bunt. Fouls it at the plate. Strike one. Hernandez on deck. So the Padres try to bunt him over. Oh, 
All right, Allen is still on the grass. Harlan backs out for a moment, now goes in there again. Garvey will play up a step or two at the bag at third, but then has to be ready to go back. Strike one count. Harlan, the pitcher, waiting. Osteen set the pitch. Norton running a bouncer back to the mound. Osteen goes to third base in time. They got him at third. They were running on the play, and Osteen still able to get the lead man, Barton, going in. So Harlan bumps into a force play as Osteen goes to third on a very close play. Now, before Hernandez comes on, we'll pause for station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. The good son. K-T-A-R Phoenix So the Padres still have runners on at first and second. They played bunt and run that time. And Osteen fielded the ball quickly and was able to get the runner going to third. Hernandez fly to center first time up. Takes a curve low for a ball. Knocked down by Holler. One ball, no strikes. They're going to the ninth inning in Atlanta. The Giants behind John Cumberland are leading 4-1 to one over the Braves into the ninth inning. One ball and no strikes. Hernandez waits, Mason on deck. Here's the look in the pitch. Looped into center field, Davis coming over and he makes the catch for the out. So Hernandez flies to center, side retired, no runs and two hits and two left. And the score at the end of two innings of play, San Diego two and the Dodgers nothing. Oh, it's too hot. You know that? It's just too hot. Sir, can Hughes Air West help you? Yeah, give me a ticket to the ocean. I beg your pardon, sir. Ocean, waves, you know, the sea. Oh, you want to fly to Los Angeles? That's near the ocean? Yes, sir. Now, at which airport would you like to land? The closest one, one to the, the ocean. ocean. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hughes Air West jets to Burbank, Ontario, Santa Ana, and LA International. LA International is close to beaches no like beaches. Manhattan, Hermosa, and Redondo. Beaches. But Santa Ana Airport is close to the beautiful beaches of Huntington, Newport, and Laguna. I'll take him. I'll take him. Give me a ticket to Santa Ana. Yes, sir. Will there be any luggage? No, just a snorkel. You'll have a wonderful flight. With real air conditioning, I hope. Yes, sir. They don't just leave a door open. No, sir. Real air conditioning. Will you, Air West, take me to the ocean? Here's your ticket, sir. And good luck with your snorkel. For a great excursion, take Hughes Air West's evening jet to Santa Ana. Enjoy Disneyland after dark and spend the next day at the South Coast beaches. Call Hughes Air West or a travel agent. To the third inning now, Steve Arlen will pitch to Haller, Valentine, and Osteen. Arlen 13, a 9 and 16, and an earned run average under 4. He's at 3.35, which is a very good earned run average. When you lose 16 games and your earned run average is 3, you're pitching very well. And uh, by the same token, Roberts, who has lost 15 games, has an earned run average of 1.95. He's been pitching super. Kirby, the other starter, has an earned run average of 316, and he's won 13 and lost 12. So the Padres building a foundation on young pitching, and boy, they've got the ERAs, and now if they can get a little sock to go with it, they're going to have a pretty good ball club because they have the, uh, the pitching started, and that's where you build a good ball club, starting right with the pitching staff. Here's Haller at bat, hitting 275, five home runs and 29 runs batted in. lined off third into the seats and it is strike one to Haller. Oh and one the count. Even Fred Norman whose record is two and twelve has a good ERA a 3.45 mark. So you can lose ball games but uh, still get some good pitching. And the Padres have just that. Haller waiting, strike one. Curve is high for a ball, and the count is one and one. One ball, one strike. Their pitching coach is Roger Craig, the ex-Dodger, and Roger has a lot of patience working with these kids, and he's been doing a fine job. Now the one-one pitch. Haller takes high again, ball two, two and one. The ball game in the third inning. Padres got two in the first and lead two to nothing. The Giants are in the ninth inning, leading Atlanta four to one. The Dodgers are three behind. Go to San Francisco tomorrow night and again on Tuesday night. Curve is high, ball three. Three and one now to Haller. Tom hitting 275 with five home runs and 29 runs batted in. The Dodgers leave San Diego after the game and fly to San Francisco tonight. 
Three and one pitch on the way. Too high, he's on with a walk. To the Dodgers' first base runner is Tom Haller. He draws the walk, the first walk given up by Arlen. Arlen has pretty good control. He has walked 88 this year in 206 innings. He has 136 strikeouts in that same string. Kirby is the strikeout man. He has 190 in 224 innings. Valentine at bat hitting 265. Bobby playing second base. One home run and 22 RBIs, and Arlen's set to go. Pitch to Bobby, up high for a ball. Bobby Valentine waiting. Haller away from first base. Colbert plays behind him. Step or two off the bag. Here's the look, and down comes the pitch. Swung on and foul back. And check the count now. The scoreboard shows it's strike two to Bobby. Houston leads Cincinnati 3 to nothing in the 8th inning. Pittsburgh leads Montreal 2 to nothing in the 7th inning. And the Cardinals won their game. They shut out the Cubs. They trail by 5 and a half in that Eastern Division. Now the pitch to Valentine. Low and inside for a ball. 1 and 2. On deck, Claude Osteen, then Maury Wells. The Dodgers trying to extend their streak against the Padres. They've beaten them 8 straight times. One and two in the pitch. High with a curve, two and two. Steve Arlen, big right-hander. Number 22. Valentine at bat number two, and the count is two and two. So we have a lot of deuces going here. Two-two count. Bobby backs out for a moment, digs in again. Here's the stretch and the look. And the pitch on the way to Valentine. Tapped over the mound near second. Hernandez right there, steps on the bag, throws to first. Double play. So Valentine hits a double play to the shortstop. Haller is out at second base. Two down, and the batter will be Osteen. That ball to Hernandez about two steps from the bag, and he had an easy play on it. Osteen, a good hitting pitcher. 192 average, seven doubles, 15 base hits in all. He's driven in five. Now the pitch by Arlen. Fastball is a strike. 0 and 1 to Claude. Ball game is in the top of the third. Two outs. A walk to Haller. Valentine grounded into the double play. The Pirates beat Montreal four to nothing. Bryles the winner and Renfro the loser. So the Pirates maintain a five and a half game lead in the East. And time is running out on the Cardinals. They trail by five and a half. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Osteen. Strike three call. Fastball is in there and the side retired and the Dodgers have still had only the regulation number of men come to bat in three innings. Score at the end of two and a half innings of play. San Diego two and the Dodgers nothing. There's one thing that all great athletes have in common, no matter what their sport and that is their spirit. The spirit to make one more effort to try a little harder than the other guy. And well the folks at Union 76 believe that the same kind of spirit can be put to work making a gasoline. Take Super 76, for example. Now, this is Union's premium blend. They've put five different engine cleaners into Super 76 when two or three might have done the job. But the people of Union 76 don't like to just get by. And that's what the spirit of 76 is all about. Those five engine cleaners are there. Because Union Oil feels that's what it takes to do an effective job of keeping critical engine areas clean. Intake valves, exhaust valves, spark plugs, carburetors anti-pollution valves. Keeping an engine clean means it's going to run better, longer. And the cleaner the engine, the less pollution it creates. So start doing yourself and your car a favor now. Get the spirit. The spirit of 76 lives at Union Oil. Now the Padres come on in the last half of the third. Mason, Jeter, and Colbert will be the batters against Osteen. Mason singled the center his first time up and then came around to score the first run for the Padres. Warm day here in San Diego. The Dodgers go to San Francisco tomorrow and Tuesday. Singer and Marisol, Downing and Perry. Plate umpire Doug Harvey had to go to the dugout for a moment. Boy, I'll tell you one thing, it is hot on that field. And you're going to have to have a lot of endurance to last this one. Osteen now ready to go to work in the bottom of the third inning. This is perhaps the hottest day we've had in San Diego in a long, long time. Here's the pitch on the way. Mason takes a curve that's low. One ball and no strikes. 
But it's hot here, it's hot where you are. So it's just one of those days. If you're on the beach, it's great. It's still hot. Time called. Doug Harvey scraping dirt from behind home plate. They, of course, probably had to remove home plate last night for the football game, and so Harvey's now trying to tap it down and get it down into the ground at the proper level. Harvey borrows Mason's bat and does a little groundkeeping there. All right, ready to go. Ball one count to left-hand hitter Don Mason. Here's the pitch from Osteen. Line center field, base hit. Osteen is really not fooling him. That is the sixth hit given up by Claude Osteen, and we're just in the third inning. Mason, a left-hand hitter, has two. And here is Johnny Jeter, the center fielder, coming up. And Haller now goes to the mound again, and he might have been sent there, and Doyle Alexander is up again in the bullpen. So already in this game, Alexander has pitched almost as much as Osteen has. We were warned ahead of time, though, that Osteen might not be able to make it too far. He has not been feeling well, but he wanted to give it a chance. He's now given up six hits. He's pitched to the batting order once around, and he's on the second go-around now. And now Doug Harvey going to the mound, and Walter Alston coming out, and this might be all for Osteen here early. If Alexander pitches now, it means that Osteen will pitch probably on Thursday in Alexander's spot. This would be the last day that Alston could use Alexander as a long man and have him pitch Thursday. The Dodgers, of course, have a doubleheader next Sunday, which kind of complicates their pitching a bit. And also the fact that Pete Mickelson is now in the hospital. It's going to be all for Osteen. He's going out of here early in the game. So Claude was under the weather, tried to give it a go. He had been hurting and been actually not feeling well since he caught the flu or a virus back in New York on the Dodgers' last road trip. So Claude has been under the weather for several weeks, and he's going to have to leave right now. Claude works two innings. He's allowed two runs, and a runner on base belongs to him. He has given up six hits, no strikeouts and no walks. So Osteen is going to leave, and Doyle Alexander is going to make the walk in here now and take over and do the pitching. So Osteen goes out. 13-10 and 10 record on the air. He could not pick up the win, of course. And he would be charged with the loss if the Dodgers do not catch up. So Alexander comes on here in the third inning, and Osteen gets a round of applause. For Doyle, this will be his 14th game. He has started 11 times, so this will be his third relief appearance. He has four complete games. He has won six and lost five, and has an earned run average of 3.26. So Alexander now begins to warm up. Well, nine more games, eight more dates at Dodger Stadium for 1971 in the regular National League club schedule. Dodgers home Wednesday night for a two-game series with the Padres, a four-game, three-date weekend, climaxed by a doubleheader next Sunday with the Braves. And then the final series of the year, the 28th, 29th, and 30th, with Dodger Fan Appreciation Night, Thursday, September 30th, wrapping it up. So we hope you plan to see the Dodgers off and down the stretch. And don't miss that appreciation. I bow we have some fabulous prizes for our fans in that one. The Giants added two more against Bob Pretty in the ninth inning, and so they go comfortably into the bottom of the ninth inning, leading 6-1 to one over Atlanta. Cumberland all the way. Stone, Herbal, Barber, and Pretty for Atlanta. Fuentes and Bonds home runs for the Giants, and Perez for Atlanta. No report from New York where the Phillies are playing the Mets. And the final score, Pittsburgh beat Montreal 4 to nothing. Bryles the winner and Renko the loser. The Cardinals shut out the Cubs 4 to nothing. a four-hitter for, uh, for Gibson, his 15th win. Kenny Holtzman takes his 15th loss. And it is 4-2, to two, Houston leading Cincinnati in the ninth inning. Wilson against Simpson, Sprague, Gibson, uh, Gibbon, and Granger. Mayberry and Cedeno have home runs. In the American League, a doubleheader, Washington and Baltimore rained out. Cleveland 5, New York 2, a final score. 3-2, to two, Detroit over Boston playing in the seventh inning. And it is two to nothing Chicago over Kansas City in the eighth inning. Milwaukee, California, a little later on, and Minnesota, Oakland, also a little later. All right, here is Johnny Jeter hitting third in the order, double to drive in a run, ready to go against Doyle Alexander. The runner at first base is Don Mason. The Padres trying to salvage the final game of the series and the final game of the year between the clubs here. Jeter takes a fastball, low and outside, ball one. So Alexander 
being pressed into service as the long man. And remember that Mickelson is not available for short relief duty. Pete has not been feeling well, and he's in the hospital. Now one and all. The look, Mason dancing off first. The pitch to Jeter is low with a curve. Two and nothing. So Osteen has to go out early. But the Dodger manager had been alerted to that possibility since Claude was not feeling good. He's had a bad cold. A throw to first almost got him. Boy, Mason had to really get back in a hurry. Alexander has a good throw. Osteen might have more than the flu. He has a sore throat. And he's just been feeling weak for about three weeks. All right, Mason jumps off first again. Alexander looks over the pitch to Jeter. Tapped toward first base. Allen up with it. He'll go to second base. In the dirt. Back to first base. Too late. And the ball goes by and is backed up by Haller. And it goes into the dugout. So down to second base will go Jeter. Will's trying to get the double play through past Alexander. Back to first. And he draws an arrow on the play. So Jeter winds up at second base after the force out. An error on Wills. The out is on Mason. From Allen down to Wills. And the throwback got away. So Wills draws an error. And here is Nate Colbert at bat. Colbert, single to drive in a run with a looper to left field his first time up. Nate Colbert at bat. Alexander ready, the pitch. Fastball in there for a strike, 0-1. Jeter on second base. It is 2-0, the Padres leading. Colbert at bat with Gaston due to follow. Now again the stretch. Alexander working. 0-1 pitch to Colbert. Swung on a miss, strike two. Good breaking ball. Nothing and two is the count. Colbert, slightly open stance. They play him to pull around to the left. Go to the count. Pickoff play. Throw back and he's just safe. Boy, Alexander has really got a good move. At second base that time, he made the throw right into the runner's fingers, sliding back head first into the bag. So he's going to have a lot of base runners a little skittish before long. 0-2 count. Now Alexander ready to go again. As I look back, checks the runner and the pitch on the way to Colbert. Low, outside, ball one. One and two. Colbert hitting 271 as he stands at the plate. Bright, sunshiny, warm day here in San Diego. A ball and two strikes with one out. The Padres lead two to nothing, third inning. There's a tapper to third base. Garvey up with it near the line. Long throw across is a bad throw. Pulls out on off. And everybody's safe. Down to third base goes Jeter when the ball got out of Allen's glove. So Garvey waited on that ball to come to him instead of charging the high hopper. And he throws badly at first base. Jeter was holding, and then when the throw went across and was popped out of Allen's glove, Jeter moved over to third. There might be two errors scored on that play. They're going to score it as a base hit and an error on Garvey to allow the runner to come to third. So they ruled that Colbert had the play beaten. Would have been close. But Garvey waited on the ball, and that cost him the chance. Here is Gaston at bat. He hit into double play his first time up. So the Dodgers now have committed two errors in the inning, and Alexander has had the hitters hit two little weak infield ground balls. There's a fastball high and inside ball one. So Alexander, who has come in to relieve Osteen, has pitched well. But his defense now has put him in a little trouble here in the third inning. Runners at first and third. Now the pitch. In for strike, it is one and one. The first error advanced a runner. In fact, both errors advanced a runner. They did not re uh, occur on a batter. Ruled that Colbert had beaten the play to third. And then when Garvey throw popped out of Allen's glove, Jeter took third. Here's the pitch to Gaston. Half swing, a strike. One and two. Gaston hitting 231 with 16 home runs and 57 runs batted in. The Dodgers have it set in double play depth again, trying to cut down the inning. The Padres lead 2 to nothing and have a tough pitcher going for them, Steve Arlen. One and two, now the pitch. Strike three, called right down the middle with a fastball, and Gaston is out on strike. So there's a big out, perhaps. And here is Morrell coming on. Morrell fouled out his first time up. 
against Goldstein. Throw away, runners on at first and third for San Diego. They lead two to nothing, bottom of the third inning. All right, Alexander trying to get out of it now. Here's the look and here's the pitch. Fly ball to center field. Davis is right there. Makes the catch and the inning is over. So Doyle Alexander comes in and does the job. No runs. One, uh, make it two hits, two errors, and there were two left on. And so we've gone through three innings of play. Ben Scully will be along with more play in the fourth. The score at the end of three, Padres two, and the Dodgers nothing. Schlitz, Milwaukee in the world. Dirty go around once in a while. So you do it with all the gusto you can. Right down to the beer you drink. Less, won't you? Everybody, and a very pleasant Sunday to you, wherever you may be. The Dodgers and the Padres here in San Diego. The Padres, two runs, seven hits, and no errors. The Dodgers, no runs, no hits, and two errors. The Dodgers have gotten only one man on base. That was Haller, who walked. But he was promptly forced as Valentine hit into a double play. So now in the fourth inning, Maury Wills, Bill Buckner, and Willie Davis. Steve Arlen. Looks like he's going to be tough. Looks in for a sign from Bob Barton. Here we go. Right-handed pitch is lifted to right center field. Moving over is Jeter. John is there and makes the catch. One away. Bill Buckner rolled out to second base. Final score, the Giants six, Atlanta one. John Cumberland won his ninth, and that was a pretty big victory for the Giants. They sorely needed one. The losing pitch is Stone. And now the Giants will fly home and await the Dodgers tomorrow night. Bill Buckner takes a strike. Houston, meanwhile, beat Cincinnati 4-2. to two, Wilson over Simpson. The Dodgers, no doubt, trying to shake themselves today in this heat in San Diego. The strike one pitch. Buckner lifts it into shallow left field, and Ivan Morrell is there. Sunglasses down. He handles it. Two out. Number three. Under Hayward. Living Hayward. Hey, here's a reminder from Pacific Telephone. If you ever reach a wrong number while dialing long distance, be sure to call the operator and let her know. She'll see you're not charged for the misdialed call. Willie Davis grounded out in the first inning. He has a six-game hitting streak. Arlen ready and delivers, and bends one over for a strike on one. Steve Arlen. Big right-hander. A dental student at Ohio State. The strike one pitch to Davis is fouled back to the screen, and the count 0 and 2. So the Giants won their ball game 6 to 1. They lost two bitter games in Atlanta. The rain game, where Aaron, with the three run home run in the 11th, beat them. Then they blew a 4 to 1 lead last night and lost. But today, Johnny Cumberland got them squared away 6 to 1. 0 and 2, the count to Willie Davis. Arlen's fastball is low and inside. Ball one, one and two. Bob Barton behind the plate. The Padres have Colbert and Mason, Hernandez and Dean, and an outfield of Morrell, Jeter, and Gaston. Arlen into the windup, and the one-two pitch is pulled on the ground into right field. Base hit for Willie Davis. He is now hit safely in seven straight. That's the first Dodger hit. Coming with two out in the fourth, and the batter is Richie Allen. (laughs) 
Richie Allen flied to right field in the second inning. Davis at first, and the pitch to Richie high and away. Ball one, one and oh. A sick Claude Osteen, realizing the importance of the ball game, did not beg off. He gave it his best shot, and he couldn't make it. He's been feeling terrible since oh, when we were in Houston. The one old pitch swung on and missed, one and one. Two out, fourth inning, two nothing, San Diego. So the Dodgers have a subpar Osteen, and they have Pete Mickelson in the hospital for a thorough checkup. The one one pitch, Allen swings and misses. One and two. Two down in the fourth, two nothing, Padres. San Diego spurred on trying to win at least one game at home against the Dodgers this year. The Dodgers have beaten them all eight times here. And the Dodgers have an eight-game winning streak against San Diego. And, of course, the Padres also know that they're trying to spoil Dodger pennant chances. So it's a big ball game for them. At least they really are interested in it. It's pretty tough when you're buried in the standings on a hot day in the middle of September, but not when you're involved with a contender. The pitch to Allen just a little high. Two and two. Bob Barton started to walk away. Played on five, Doug Harvey said no. The Padres have lost three in a row. They lost the first two of the series, plus the defeat to Cincinnati. Dodgers have won ten of their last twelve. Arlen at the belt, looks over at Davis, goes over there, and Willie hops back to the bag. The Dodgers, in order to stay in contention, have had to beat the big pitchers. And so far, they've been equal to it. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Davis goes. It's swung on and missed. Strike three. So Richie Allen strikes out. No runs, one hit, a man left. The end of three and a half innings. Padres two, Dodgers nothing. I don't mean to schedule your family meals for you, but here's a suggestion that could be fun. Set aside one day every week, or let's say Thursday, and have a wiener barbecue. Your youngsters will love you for it. Let them do most of the work, and you'll love it even more. Your assignment is to get the best tasting wieners you can buy. That, of course, means Farmer John wieners, the only ones with the wonderful, wide-open spaces western flavor from the smoking. Every marvelous morsel of this plump, juicy wieners is meat, all meat. So you can count on them to provide good, wholesome nourishment. Another suggestion, have regular Farmer John wieners one Thursday, then extra long Farmer John wieners the next Thursday, and so on. The 10-inch extra long Farmer John wieners we call Dodger Dogs at the stadium, except for size, they're the same as regular Farmer John wieners. So how about it? Every Thursday is barbecue night, or make it Friday or Tuesday, any night, just so the wieners are from Farmer John. Bottom of the fourth inning, the Padres two and the Dodgers nothing. Bob Barton, Tommy Dean, and Steve Arlen in that order. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. Bob Barton will start it off. Right-hand hitting catcher, ex-giant. Barton, single to right field in the second inning, one for one. Doyle Alexander, who picked up for Claude Osteen in the third inning. Doyle now into the windup, right hand ready and delivers, and Barton takes inside, ball one. KTAR Phoenix. One and all the count. The next two nights, the Dodgers are at Candlestick Park. You'll hear it all, and you can see it all as well. KFI, the Dodger Radio Network, and in Los Angeles, Channel 11, KTTV. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Barton. Sliced to right field down the line. Buckner coming as the ball works away from him and lands foul. One and one. The count to Bob Barton. 3.30 down the lines here at San Diego Stadium. 3.70 up the alleys. 4.20 to center. About a 17-foot high concrete wall going from foul pole to foul pole. And from the ground for about 8 feet at least it's padded to protect the outfielders. Last night, San Diego Stadium was the scene of an exhibition football game. So the grounds crew is indeed to be complimented. Barton takes low, ball two. They've done a great job, and I'm sure they must have worked most of the night to go from football into a baseball day game so quickly. The 2-1 pitch, 
is lifted to right center field. Davis is there. Willie makes the catch for the out. And boy, that ball really started to take off. The ground crew has done such a good job that there are no traces of the football game. In other words, you don't see any leftover 10-yard lines. Done a great job. Tommy Dean, the batter, right-hand hitting third baseman, playing for Ed Spezio, has a bad leg. He chases a breaking ball. On one. Padres, two runs, seven hits. Dodgers, no runs, one hit, two errors. The Dodgers must win to remain back by three. The Giants have won. With it, a strike. Oh, and two. The Giants wound up winning six out of nine in Atlanta. They went into that series having won five out of six. High chopper to Alexander. He has to flip to Allen in time for the out. Two down. The batter will be Steve Arlen. The Giants had trouble with the Braves. And they had one, as we said, five out of six. They lost two out of three, so they wound up winning six out of nine overall. The Dodgers have had a very bad time in Atlanta. They have won only one and lost five. Ground ball to third. Garvey has it. Goes high to Allen. And Richie has the ball go off his glove. Backed up by Valentine. And that's a second error charge to Steve Garvey. So Garvey has thrown two away. Will's too high. That's the third Dodger error. Boy, they have really hit the flats today. As for Preston Gomez, I'm not so sure he wants his pitcher running around out of the base pads in 100-degree heat. But Arlen is there. And now here is Hernandez. Alexander at the belt, looks over at first, works Hernandez low. Ball one. The 1-0 pitch, off speed and fouled away. Whatever it is about Alexander, last Sunday, he started and the Dodgers were raggedy. And so were the Reds. The Reds won that ball game and Alexander suffered the defeat. And he comes in in relief of Claude Osteen and immediately the Dodgers start throwing the ball around. They've committed three errors. Pitch is low. Of course, one of the reasons, being a sinker ball pitcher, his infielders are usually busy. Two and one to count to Hernandez. Fastball low, ball three. Three and one. The next one is ball four. The run is at first and second, two out. And Don Mason, the batter, he's two for two. The pitch to Mason, a strike, on one. Here's the strike one pitch. Line to left field. Crawford coming up and over. Slides and he can't hold it. The ball goes into foul ground. One run is over. Here comes the throw to the plate. And they do get Hernandez at the plate. But the run is over. And it is three to nothing San Diego. So Mason doubled into the left field corner. Scoring Arlen. And Hernandez was thrown out from Willie Crawford to Tom Haller. So that's one run, one hit, an error, one left. And at the end of four, Padres three, Dodgers nothing. Hey, Marv, you buy a new Volkswagen? You call it, Henry, the Super Beetle. 
Sure is red. Sure is. Never figured you for a small car, Mark. I just got tired of those big jobs I've been driving for years. What made you decide to get a VW? Well, I figured if I'm going to go small, I'm going to go with a leader. You know, Volkswagen's been America's best-selling import for years. But don't you get all kinds of goodies with those other little cars? Big deal. With a Super Beetle, you get a padded dash, bucket seats with built-in headrests, and back there, an electric rear window defogger. Those are all standard? Yeah. Uh, don't touch it, Henry. Oh. And little things like a two-speed electric windshield wiper and a washer. You even get a flow-through ventilation system. Not bad. Is that carpeting extra? No, standard. How about the transmission? Four-speed synchromesh. It's included. Does the rear seat fold down? Yep. Cost you more, right? Standard equipment on the Super Beetle. Hey, Marv, what about that? What? That! Now, you can't tell me that comes with a VW. No, that's optional. There are six authorized Volkswagen dealers in the Phoenix area. See the yellow pages for the one nearest you. We go to the fifth inning here at San Diego. The Padres now, three runs, eight hits. The Dodgers, no runs, one hit, and three errors. A great effort by Willie Crawford with two out and two on. If he did not make the diving attempt, Arlen would have scored anyway. So he was trying to shut them out. Then when the ball got away, Arlen scored, but he alertly picked it up and made an accurate throw to Tommy Haller to nail Hernandez. The skid marks are around the home plate, and you can see that Tommy Haller really blocked the plate because Hernandez arcing skid is a good foot to the left of home plate. He never got in there at all. Bob Barton out to the mound to talk to Steve Arlen, and it will be interesting now to see about Arlen. Remember, in this 100-degree heat, he got aboard on an error, then went to second on a walk and scored on a base hit. We'll see whether it takes anything out of the big right-hander. He has allowed only one hit through four innings, so he can't get much tougher. And here's Willie Crawford to start it off. Crawford, Garvey, Haller. Harlan into the windup and delivers. And the first one on the outside corner for a strike. Going on. Going one to Willie Crawford. Next one is down and away. One ball, one strike. Arlen comes right back, 1-1, one, one, and it's swung on and missed, and Carver's helmet comes flying off. He swung so hard his head snapped back. One and two. The Dodgers, of course, need hitting now, so they have Joe Moeller in the bullpen. If they get down to Alexander's spot, they would hit for him. The one-two pitch to Crawford fouled off. Steve Arlen is nine and sixteen, zero oh and one with the Dodgers, zero oh and two lifetime. One-two pitch to Crawford, high ball two, two and two. Harvard waiting, Arlen into the windup. Big right hander comes back and it's swung on and missed strike three. Boy, he's really hurrying that ball up now. That's three strikeouts. And Steve Garvey coming up. Couple of final scores. The White Sox shut out Kansas City. Three to nothing. Wilbur Wood won his 20th. He beat Steve Drago. And Detroit shaded Boston three to two. Timmerman beat Curtis. Garvey popped up in the second inning. Steve having his troubles throwing the ball. He's thrown two away for errors. And his error was cashed in for the third Padres run. Pitch high, ball one. San Diego's other two runs were earned when Mason singled, Jeter doubled him home, and Colbert singled home Jeter. And the Padres lead 3 nothing here in the fifth. Garvey, after a breaking ball, goes with it and whacks it into right field. So Steve singles to right. That'll bring up Tom Haller with one out. Fifth inning, three nothing San Diego. The Giants won their ball game. They beat Atlanta six to one. The Dodgers win. They remain three back. They lose. They drop to four. After today, sixteen games left. The pitch to Tom Haller is low, ball one, one and all. Oh. 
One ball, no strikes to Tommy. They're not holding Garvey. Colbert is back of him. Harlan looks over there, works Haller on the hands, and Tommy holds up his swing. But now Harvey checks with third base umpire Vargo, who called it a swing. And the count, one and one. One ball and one strike. Haller back up there. Tommy walked in the second inning. Now Arlen delivers. Haller takes high. Ball two. Two and one. Three runs, eight hits for San Diego. No runs, two hits, and three errors for the Dodgers. One of the errors contributed to a run. Two and one to Haller. Arlen at the belt, looks at Garvey, works the Dodger catcher, and Tommy fouls it off. Two and two. Dodgers will fly to San Francisco immediately after the ball game. And get ready for tomorrow night. Dodgers had everything go their way at Dodger Stadium, but now they go into the land of the Giants. Monday night and Tuesday night, we'll be back home Wednesday. 2-2 two, two pitch to Tom Haller. Swung on and missed strike three. Actually got a piece of it, and Barton held on to the ball. Four strikeouts for Steve Arlen. And the batter is Bobby Valentine. Valentine grounded into a double play in the third inning, so Bob is 0 for 1. Harlan, a look over at Garvey. The right handed delivers. Valentine takes a strike inside part of the play. Boy, Harlan is right on his game. One one, the count to Valentine. Harlan, hands together at the belt. Now the strike one pitch to Valentine, foul back in the count 0 and 2. Valentine with two down becomes a very important hitter. If Bobby gets on and it extends the inning, Bill Sudeikis is on deck to bat for Doyle Alexander. If Valentine fails to get on, the inning is over and Alexander stays in the game. Strike two pitch to Bob. Taken low. Ball one. Padres three. Dodgers nothing. Fifth inning, two out. Garvey is short lead at first. Moeller throwing in the bullpen. Arlen ready and the one-two pitch to Valentine. Breaking ball fouled away. Off to the right, back into the crowd. That thing hits the concrete kangaroos back up about ten rows. One and two to Valentine. Giants beat Atlanta six to one. John Cumberland won his ninth. That might have been the biggest game he's won all year. The Dodgers trying to hang tough and stay three back, but they're down three nothing so far here in the fifth inning. Harlan delivers and a chopper to third. Off the glove of Dean and everybody stays. It'll be an error charge to Tommy Dean. He was caught between hops and he couldn't handle it. All right, that means Bill Sudeikis will now come up and hit for Doyle Alexander. And Joe Moeller will be pitching the bottom of the fifth inning. Bill Sudeik is coming up. Don't forget to join the many thousands of Western families who are fans of Farmer John pork products. They're as fine and fresh as you can buy. Farmer John. Sudeikis has had more or less of a wasted year ever since the knee injury he suffered against the New York Mets at Dodger Stadium. Suds he has had only 70-some-odd at bat, and he's hitting 171. He has two home runs. Both hit right-handed, and he's batting left-handed against Arlen. Two on, two out. Fifth inning, three-nothing Padres. Sudeikis takes outside, ball one. One ball and no strikes to Bill Sudeikis. Arlen ready, checks and delivers. Sudgy takes on the inside corner at the knees. One and one. Arlen making some fine pitches. 
Padre scored twice in the first, added another in the fourth. This turns out to be the first Dodger rally of the day. A base hit and a two-out error. The pitch to Sudeikis off speed and a strike. Boy, he is right on target. One and two to Bill Sudeikis. Garvey at second, Valentine at first. Two out. Now the one-two pitch to Sudeikis is through to right field. And back goes Gaston to the wall. Leaps up, it's off the wall. In comes Garvey. Here comes Valentine on a pinch double by Sudeikis. Bill Sudeikis gets the Dodgers back in the ball game as he doubles off the right field wall. Sudgy now comes off, getting a foul on the back from Danny Ozark. And out at second base, Bill Grabarkowitz will run for Sudeikis. Maury Wills comes up, trying to pick up Grabarkowitz and tie up the game. So the error by Tommy Dean left the door open, and Sudeikis doubled home, too. All in at the belt and delivers. Wills hits one slowly to short. Hernandez, in a hurry, gets him. But the Dodgers are in the game. Two runs. Two hits and an error. One man left. And at the end of four and a half innings, Padres three, Dodgers two. Spirit. The ability to make one more effort. To try a little harder than the other guy. Spirit. That's what the folks at Union 76 have. And they put it to work making gasoline. Take Super 76, for example. Union's premium blend. They've put five different engine cleaners into Super 76 when two or three might have done a job. But the people at Union 76 don't like to just get by. And that's what the spirit of 76 is all about. Those five engine cleaners are there. Because Union feels that's what it takes to do an effective job of keeping critical engine areas clean. Intake valves, exhaust valves, spark plugs, carburetors, anti-pollution valves. Keeping an engine clean means it's going to run better, longer. And the cleaner the engine, the less pollution it creates. So start doing yourself and your car a favor now. Get the spirit. The spirit of 76 lives at Union Oil. Bottom of the fifth inning, the Padres, three runs, eight hits, and one error. The Dodgers, two runs, three hits, and three errors. Joe Moeller now will take over for Doyle Alexander. Alexander went two innings, allowed one run and two hits. The run was unearned. Osteen went two innings, allowed two runs and six hits. And now it's Moeller working the fifth inning. Johnny Jeter, Nate Colbert, and Clarence Gaston. So errors have figured prominently. The third Dodger error gave the Padres their third run. That's the difference in the game. And the error by Tommy Dean set up the two Dodger run. Johnny Jeter, double homer run and also scored. Last time I've hit into a force play. So Jeter is one for two. And Joe Moeller going to work. Joe into the windup and delivers a bunt. Up along third foul. And the count 0 and 1. The Dodgers are short a man in the bullpen. Pete Mickelson is back at St. John's Hospital in Santa Monica. Pete just hasn't been himself. Been kind of quiet and, and tired and down. He has never really bounced back, I don't believe, from hepatitis. And it has gotten so that the Dodgers figured they better send Pete for a thorough checkup. So he's in St. John's right now. We certainly send him our best wishes. And we hope that... He'll pass the physical checkup with flying colors and get back here and join the ball club. But Pete's one of those guys you like to be around, but he's been very quiet lately, so you just know he's a little down. The strike one pitch, inside one and one. Three to two, San Diego, bottom of the fifth inning. 
Muller building into the windup, and the 1-1 pitch on the way. Big overhand curve for a strike, and the count one and two. We were told by a grounds crew member that the temperature at second base was 106 before the game started. It has to be a lot warmer than that at third, because that's the hot corner. Oh, the pitch to Jeter, strike three call. One away, and here's Nate Culver. Colbert is two for two. He singled to drive in a run, had an infield single in the third. Muller on the rubber, into the windup, and Joe delivers, and the curveball over for a strike on one. Muller comes back to the plate, and the strike one pitch, half swing, is going to be another strike. Joe really getting up on top of that ball, throwing a big downer. Oh, and two to Colbert. Giants won their game in Atlanta, six to one. The Padres are leading the Dodgers 3-2 here in the fifth inning. Moeller to the windup, and the strike two pitch coming up. Fastball, swung on and missed, strike three. So Joe comes out of the Dodger bullpen to strike out Jeter and Colbert. And here is Clarence Gaston. Clarence Gaston hit into a double play and struck out. He's 0 for 2. Bowler into the windup. Joe ready and delivers. And the first one is just outside. Ball one. Osteen, Alexander, and Moeller. Steve Arlen working for San Diego. 3 to 2, San Diego. The 1 0 pitch swung on and fouled away. 1 and 1. The key to the Dodger 2. With two out and a man on, Valentine hit a ball to third. Tommy Dean, who is playing out of position, he's normally a shortstop, but Spezio is hurt. Dean could not handle it for an error, and then Sudeikis doubled. Half swing foul, and the count one and two. Sudsy got an off-speed pitch for a strike, and then Allen came back with the same pitch, and Sudsy hit the right field wall to drive in the two runs and put the Dodgers back in the ball game. One and two to Clarence Gaston. Mola ready, Joe delivers, and it's low. Two and two. The Padres have given the Dodgers a bad time at Dodgers Stadium. It's remarkable how the Dodgers have won all eight played here, but only four of the seven played at Dodgers Stadium. Here's the 2-2 two, two pitch coming up. Fastball fouled away. So the Padres will be at Dodgers Stadium Wednesday night the 15th, Thursday night the 16th. That's right, after the Giants series and just before next weekend with Atlanta. Here's the 2-2 pitch coming up. Moeller deals, curveball, lifted to right center field. Buckner has a play. Billy is there, makes the catch for the out. So Moeller sets the Padres down, and at the end is five. San Diego, three. The Dodgers, two. Schlitz, Milwaukee in the world. down to the beer you drink. And that means Schlitz. When you're out of Schlitz, you're out of beer. Through five innings, the Padres leading the Dodgers three to two. Three runs, eight hits, and an error for the Padres. Two runs, three hits, and three errors for the Dodgers. One of the three errors contributed to the scoring of a run, and that's the difference in the game now. Bill Buckner, Willie Davis, and Richie Allen in that order. 
Sixth inning, 3-2 San Diego. Harlan into the windup and delivers. Buckner lifts one into shallow right field. Going out for it is Mason, but Gaston is there to make the catch. One away. Boy, Mason is 5'11". He sure doesn't look it, and particularly when he goes out there and runs by Clarence Gaston. One out, and here's Willie Davis. Davis has grounded out and singled. He's one for two. Gaston really towered over him. How big is Clarence? 6'4". Davis strokes one foul. Back to Gilliam and the count 0 and 1. Padres 3, Dodgers 2 with one out in the sixth inning. Harlan into the windup and the strike one pitch off speed and grounded down to Mason. Don flips to Colbert. Two down. That deep throaty roar in the background, the group of Marines, they look like boots. I would assume that they're in boot training. Don't see any hair. Two down. Here's Richie Allen. Allen ready and delivers, and Rich takes low. Ball one. Allen has flied to right and struck out. Three to two, San Diego. We're in the sixth inning. Allen has allowed only three hits. Steve into the windup, and the 1-0 pitch to Richie Allen is fouled away off to the right out of play. One and one. The Dodgers, in trying to stay in this pennant race, and they have certainly done that, have had to knock off the best pitcher that each team has to offer of late. They have not had a patsy, as you might call them. They've had to beat the Stars. In Houston, they had to beat Don Wilson. Cincinnati, they had to knock off Don Gullett and Jim McLaughlin, who pitched a great game. They had to beat Marischal and did. There's a ground ball to shortstop. Hernandez up with it. Throws to first off the bag, and Colbert tags Allen for the out. And, of course, they had to beat Dave Roberts here and did that. Now they're up against Steve Arlen, who has set them down in order, and at the end of five and a half innings, Padres three and the Dodgers two. Farmer John claims there's nothing you can do to improve baseball. It's perfect the way it is. Well, coming from him, that's quite an endorsement, because if there ever was a perfectionist, the good farmer's it. Now, you take the way he makes sausage, and you'll know what I mean. Most sausage in your store is shipped in frozen or cold storage, or made here from frozen or cold storage pork. Well, that kind of sausage isn't fresh enough for Farmer John. He spends the extra time and money to bring eastern corn-fed porkers out here alive. Then the meat's U.S. inspected and dressed fresh right here in the West. So Farmer John's sausage is the way sausage should be, strictly fresh. And when it comes to spicing, Farmer John never uses artificial seasoning. His sausage is made with only costly natural herbs and spices. Yet for all this, Farmer John's sausage costs you no more, often much less. So why settle for anything less than perfection? Farmer John Sausage. It's the easternmost in quality and the westernmost in flavor. All right, now let's pause for a station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. All right, bottom of the six. Padres three, Dodgers two, Joe Moeller pitching to Ivan Morrell, Bob Barton, and Tommy Dean. And the bullpen gets busy now for the Padres. The pitch over for a strike. In this heat, the good idea to have somebody ready. Arlen has worked six, and he's also run around on the base paths. The pitch a little low. One ball, one strike. Down in the pen, perhaps just getting in some work, would be Tommy Phoebus. Stocky right-hander. And left-hander Bill Laxton. The next one, a strike. And the count, one and two. Three-two, San Diego, bottom of the sixth. Morrell has fouled out and flied to center. K-T-A-R-F. Claude Osteen gave it a try. He was sick. 
and it's over 100, but he still wanted to keep in the rotation. But Osteen went out and didn't have it. Gave up two runs. Was in trouble, and they finally took him out in the third inning. Alexander worked two. And now Joe Moeller is working his second inning. The one and two pitch, low and away. Two balls, two strikes to count. Moeller looks into a ringing wet Tommy Haller. Now delivers, and it's swung on and missed strike three. And Moeller has now struck out three of the four men he has faced. They don't forget to look for the special slit 16-ounce bottle display most everywhere. Bob Barton singled to right and fly to center. Bob is one for two. On deck, Tommy Dean. Tough ball game. It's hard to believe that this one is as important as it is. The pitch to Barton, low, ball one. Small crowd and temperature over 100, so it has everybody kind of moving a little slower than usual. But this one is just as important as being played before 50,000 screaming people at Dodger Stadium because the Giants have won. The 1-0 pitch, a strike, 1-1. One one. It is also the lull before the storm. There'll be some people and some noise at Candlestick. You can bet starting tomorrow night. Tomorrow night and Tuesday night games will be sent to you on KFI, the Dodger Radio Network, and in the Los Angeles area, Channel 11 KTTV. So you'll be in on every exciting play in this tough pennant race. One and two, the count to Bob Barton. Tomorrow night, Bill Singer and Juan Marichal. And then Tuesday night, Al Downing and Gaylord Perry. So the big boys will be up and after them the next two nights. Here's the one-two pitch to Barton. Bob takes high ball two. The Dodgers sweeping three at Dodger Stadium. And now they go to unfriendly candlestick. And we say that meaning, of course, that the ballpark has been a bad spot for the Dodgers over the years. The two-two pitch is hit to right. Buckner comes up and makes the catch. The Dodgers, however, have done well at candlestick. They've won five straight up there this year. So we'll see tomorrow night. Two down in the sixth inning, third baseman Tommy Dean, the batter. It was Tommy's error that opened the door, and then Sudeikis came in and pushed it wide open with that double, and the Dodgers got back into the game. Dean has singled and hit back to the box. Moeller deals high, ball one. When the Dodgers bat in the seventh, they have Crawford, Garvey, Haller. Here's the 1-0 pitch on the way. Taken for a strike. One ball, one strike. 16 games left. Now the 1-1 pitch on the way. Low ball two, two and one. Dean waiting, one and two. Moeller into the windup. Joe ready, and here he comes. Fastball, a big chopper down to Valentine. Bobby gloves it at the face and throws him out. So Moeller has retired six in a row. Gary Doggett will be along in one minute, and the score at the end of six. Padres three, Dodgers two. Crawford has grounded out and struck out, batting 281. He has eight home runs and 35 runs batted in. So Crawford now steps in. It is three to two, San Diego leading. And Arlen with nine wins on the year, trying to get his tenth. Steve Garvey on deck and Tom Haller to follow. Here's Arlen to the windup, and the pitch to Crawford is a fastball, low ball one. One and all the count. The 1 0 pitch, Crawford a half swing. He checked up, and it's ball two. Two balls and no strikes to Willie C. Dodgers on to San Francisco after this one. Play the Giants two games tomorrow night and Tuesday night. Here's the 2 0 pitch to Willie. That's low. Ball three, and it's three balls and no strikes.
Three and all to count. Phoebus and Laxton, a right-hander and a left-hander, now are working in the bullpen for San Diego down in left field. Here's the 3 0 pitch to Willie. Low it inside, and he's on with a walk to open up the seventh inning. That is the second walk given up by Arlen. And the batter coming on will be Steve Garvey, single to right after popping out his first time up. Garvey hitting 230 with seven home runs, 76 runs batted in. On at first base, Crawford. The Padres lead 3 to 2. The Dodgers must win to keep pace with the Giants, who won today. They beat Atlanta 6 to 1. All right. Harlan taking his time, ready to pitch to Garvey. We'll see how the Dodgers play it now, down by a run. Here's the pitch. Steve fouls it away upstairs to the right. It is strike one. The butt is not on. The Dodgers behind the run here. But Haller and Valentine and the Muller do to follow with Hoyt Wilhelm now working in the bullpen. 0 oh 1 the count. Go to first and back goes Crawford. So Arlen figures the Dodgers may put a play on here with Garvey up there, and Garvey has shown that he can go to right field pretty well. Crawford moves away again. Colbert holds him on, and Arlen now nods yes to a sign from Barton. Here's the look over, and again a throw over, and again Crawford hops back on the bag. Strike one to Garvey. Seems to be getting a little bit cooler. Again a throw to first, and again too late. On one. Garvey waiting. Arlen with several throws to first. The pitch to Steve. Looped into right field. It'll be a pace hit. Crawford around. Heads to third. Gaston over to bring it back in. And the Dodgers are in business now here in the seventh inning. On a single to right field by Steve Garvey. And the Dodgers are certainly impressed with the way Garvey has been handling the bat and going with the pitch to the opposite field. So Steve singles into right field. And here's Tom Haller at bat. Has walked and struck out. At this stage on a hot day now, Preston Gomez will keep a sharp eye on his pitcher, Arlen, to see that he does not run out of gas. He's gone all the way. It was 100 degrees or more when the game began, and that has to take its toll. Colbert now is talking with the pitcher, Arlen, between the mound and first base. Garvey is on with his second hit of the game. The Dodgers have four. Crawford, who walked to open the inning, carries the tying run, and he was the third. And Allen now trying to keep the Dodgers alive. Valentine on deck and the pitcher spot to follow. All right, Haller waiting. The infield back. They'll go for two and give up the tying run. Here's the pitch. Fly ball to left field. Should do it. Way back. Going forward as the left fielder Morrell over his head makes a catch going to the wall. The run will score on a long fly ball by Haller who almost drove it over his head. Brand new ball game now as Haller a long out from deep left field. Morrell had to keep going. He caught the ball on the warning track in left field. So Haller going to the opposite field gets the run in on a sacrifice fly. The Dodgers have caught up. And now Bobby Valentine the batter with Garvey still at first base. Garvey had gone to second, waiting to see there if Morrell would catch the ball. Had Morrell missed it, he would have scored. Then he had to retreat to first when Morrell made an over-the-shoulder catch. So the game is even now. As Valentine comes up, he was on on an error, hitting to double play. Bobby is 0 for 2, hitting 265. So we've got a brand new one now in San Diego. Here's the pitch on the way to Valentine. Ground ball hit up the middle. Center field pace hit. Garvey goes to second base, heads for third. Here's the throw to third. He is safe at third, and down to second goes Valentine. Valentine singles to center, goes to second on the throw through the third as Garvey tested Jeter's arm and he beat the throw on a bounce. And Valentine goes into second base and he hit the bag hard and he's hurt a bit. Time is called as Julia Madozar go out to see about Bobby who slid into second base hard and he might have twisted a knee. So time is called for the moment. Valentine being checked by trainer Bill Bueller, now Walter Austin coming out, Bobby hobbling around out there. He might have hit the bag hard. He's going to run around a little bit, and boy, here's one guy who doesn't want to go out of there. He's kicking that knee, flexing the leg, and he says, I'm going to stay in. Alston is almost a second base to see about him. 
Mueller and Gilliam and Ozark all checking with Bobby Valentine who does some knee bends now. Bobby, of course, had a, a, an operation on that knee in the spring, you'll recall, and it's the same knee. He's flexing it, and now he's popping at his leg, muscle up high. And it might be that he's pulled a muscle, not the knee at all. He's jumping up and down, says, I can stay in. Boy, he doesn't want to go out of that ball game. You can bet on that. So Valentine singles to center field. Ozark now is giving him instructions what to do on, in certain situations. Jimmy Lefebvre is swinging bats in the on-deck circle, and he's going to come on to bat now. And Valentine is still doing some stretch muscles at second base. Looked like he might have pulled a muscle up in the leg and not hurt the knee. He's flexing that leg, but he was popping his fist against the thigh, trying to loosen it up. All right, Lefebvre, who had a key hit last night, will come on. Here in the seventh inning as a pinch hitter for Joe Moeller, who worked two good innings, allowed no runs, and no hits. Lefebvre at that, and the Dodgers now have a chance to take the lead. Lefebvre, pinch hitting. And they're going to walk Lefebvre intentionally and pitch to Wills, who is due up next. So Lefebvre's going to get an intentional walk from Steve Harlan. That will be the third walk. And it'll be Maury Wills due up here to try to get the Dodgers in front. And as Wills has done so many times, he's going to be up there in the pressure spot again. So Lefevre being walked by Arlen. As Valentine singled to the center, then Garvey went to third, daring Jeter, who made a throw to third on a bounce, and Valentine able to go into second base. Pulled up a little lame, and he's still rubbing that right thigh with his fist, trying to get some life into it. All right, Lefevre walks, and Preston Gomez is coming to the mound now. Wills will be the batter, with Buckner to follow, and they have a meeting at the mound, and we'll see now if Preston's going to make a change. He has Mike Corkins, a right-hander. And he has a left-hander. Mike Caldwell. So two pitchers, a young left-hander and a right-hander, down in the bullpen for San Diego. And Gomez is talking now with Arlen, perhaps telling him how they want it played. He's not going to take Arlen out. He's talking to his infielders and getting the defense set up. So here's Wills coming up. Maury, in the game on Friday night, got the key hit in the ninth inning. Broke the game apart, put the Dodgers in front. Here's Wills up now, and the Padres are going to play back in double play depth. With Garvey carrying a big run at third base. Ball game is tied at 3-3. We're in the seventh inning. Garvey, Valentine, and, Sid and uh, Lefevre on base. Sudeikis drove in two big runs in the fourth with a double. Now Wills at bat. Facing Arlen. Here's the look and the pitch on the way to Moore. High bouncing ball in front of second base. Mason there steps on the bag. Goes to first base. Too late. Wills is across the bag in time and the run is over the Dodgers lead. So high bouncing ball that Mason played at second base to get the force out on Lefevre. Then his throw not in time to get Mousy who avoids the double play and gets the run batted in and the Dodgers are in front four to three taking the lead for the first time today. Buckner comes to bat now with runners at first and third and two outs. Buckner has flied out twice and grounded out. Time called now, and I think they're going to put in a runner for Valentine. Danny Ozark is coming to the dugout. Valentine is standing at third. I don't think they like the way Valentine was running. So Don Sutton is going to run for him, and Lefevre will stay in the game perhaps and play second base. So Valentine will have to come off and go get some treatment. Boy, Bobby doesn't want to show it. He's uh, coming off, kind of jogging, but he hurt, he hurt the leg, pulled a muscle. He's been playing great ball, and the Dodgers hate to lose him in that lineup. So he will come out. Sutton will run for him here in the seventh inning. And here's Buckner now trying to put a little more on the scoreboard for the Dodgers. Runners at first and third and two outs. Billy Buckner 0 for 3. Arlen ready. Here's the pitch. Low, a pass gets by Barton. Here comes Sutton to the plate. He will score, and the Dodgers lead 5 to 3. As that was skipped off Barton's glove. We'll see how they call it. It'll be a pass ball against Bob Barton, and the Dodgers get another run in and lead now 5 3. And on the play, Wills jogs into second base. With a fastball low and away to Buckner off Barton's glove. That gets Don Sutton in. And the Dodgers have a three-run inning now here in the seventh. 
Buckner at bat 0 for 3 with 37 RBIs. Wills away from second base and Arlen ready to go now. Here's the stretch and the look and the pitch on the way to Buckner. Looped into the field and it's going to be in for a base hit. Here comes Wills to score as Buckner singles from the Dodgers lead 6 to 3. So the Dodgers having a good inning here have scored four times and have turned it around. Here comes Gomez to the mound now and that's going to be all for Arlen. So in the inning a walk to Crawford got it started and Garvey singled to right. A long sacrifice fly by Haller tied the game. Then a key hit in the inning, a single to center by Valentine, sent Garvey to third, and Valentine took second on the throw to the third. Then they walk pinch hitter Lefevre. Wills was safe on a close play after a ground ball to Mason at second. He tried for the double play, just missed getting Morey. And then Buckner has singled after a pass ball, advanced the runner across the plate, and a man to second base. And now we'll have a new pitcher coming in for San Diego in just a moment as Steve Arlen goes out. So Arlen works six and two-third innings. He allowed six hits, at least six runs. He has a runner on base that belongs to him. He struck out four and walked three, and he'll have a new pitcher coming in for San Diego in just a minute. So Arlen will leave, and waiting at the mound is Preston Gomez. Well, while the new pitcher gets ready, a reminder, have you cast your vote yet in the Dodgers Toyota Player of the Year competition? Pick up a ballot when you visit Dodger Stadium. They'll be given to you at the auto gates, or if you wish, pick one up at our ticket office on Stadium Way. Vote for the Dodger of your choice. Put your ballot in one of the ballot boxes and be sure to hold on to your stuff. You not only may have your player win a Toyota Corolla Fastback, but some lucky fan will get one on Dodger Fan Appreciation Night. That's September the 30th when the competition will be concluded. Dodgers Toyota Player of the Year. Pick a ballot next time you visit Dodger Stadium. Young left-hander Mike Caldwell will come in to pitch now for the San Diego Padres here in the seventh inning. The Dodgers have chased four runs in, have chased Steeter, uh, starter Steve Arlen, and now face the youngster just recalled from the low minors, Mike Caldwell. He was pitching in C-ball before being called up. On the scoreboard, the Giants snapped a seven-game losing streak. They beat Atlanta 6-1. to one. Cumberland the winner, and Stone the loser. Fuentes and Bonds and Perez had home runs. Pittsburgh beat Montreal 4 to nothing. a shutout for Bryles. Renko the loser. St. Louis shut out Chicago 4 to nothing. Gibson over Holtzman. And Houston beat Cincinnati 4 to 2. Wilson over Simpson. Washington and Baltimore, a doubleheader rained out. Cleveland beat New York 5 to 2. McDowell over Peterson. Detroit shaded Boston 3 to 2. And Chicago blank Kansas City 3-0, and it was win number 20 for Wilbur Wood. Drago the loser. 1-1 one, one, Angels and Milwaukee at the end of two and a half. 1-0 Oakland leads Minnesota with Blue trying to get his 24. That's through three innings. Willie Davis at bat. There are two outs. He's the eighth batter of the inning, and he has one for three today. On at first base, Buckner has just singled in a run. The Dodgers have scored four and lead six to three, and will look to Hoyt Wilhelm to protect the lead in the seventh inning. These runs are being scored for Joe Moeller's account, and Joe hasn't won a game this year. There's a swing and a miss, strike one on a fastball offered up by Caldwell. Caldwell, stocky build, he was a free agent draft last year. There's a swing and a fly ball to deep center field. Going for this one is Jeter, still going. He's at the warning track and catches it over his shoulder for the third out to retire this side. Davis hit it a long way for the last out of the inning. The Dodgers show four runs on three hits. No errors, and they leave one, and so the score at the end of six and a half innings of play, the Dodgers six and the Padres three. Spark plugs, valves, carburetor, critical parts of your car's engine. Know what happens when you don't keep them clean? Your engine gets sluggish, and it doesn't perform like it should. And your gas mileage takes a tumble. How do you keep these critical parts clean without an overhaul? Well, that's really easy. With Super 76, Union Oil's premium blend gasoline, Super 76 has five engine cleaners. Five to keep your engine clean and running like it should. A clean engine means clean air. So why don't you drive in where you see the big orange Union 76 ball and fill it up 
with Super 76. That's the spirit. The spirit of 76 lives at Union Oil. the Dodgers will look to Hoyt Wilhelm to come on here and pitch against the Padres who will send up a pinch hitter to begin the last half of the seventh inning. And with Pete Mickelson in the hospital, the gamble the Dodgers made with Wilhelm might now bear out. Wilhelm, of course, released by Atlanta. The Dodgers signed him on and sent him to Spokane where he got in shape, and then they brought him to the big club. And at 48 years old, the Dodgers hope that he can really fill in now down the stretch. And with short man Mickelson, as we said, in the hospital, they looked to Wilhelm to try to really take up the slack in that spot. Rod Gaspar will now be the hitter for Caldwell. Gaspar, who was formerly with the Mets and has been in the minors this year for San Diego, coming on to bat in the seventh inning against Hoyt Wilhelm. Wilhelm with the Dodgers has made five appearances and has allowed one run it has given up to the Padres here in the opening game of the series. A double to Mason got a run in, in the ninth inning. All right, here's a left-hand batter, Gaspar at bat with Hernandez and Mason to follow. Wilhelm had worked three, run, uh, three inning, uh, games this year with Atlanta and five now with the Dodgers, a total of eight. One earned run with the Dodgers in ten innings. Now the windup and the pitch on the way. Knuckler is high, one ball, no strikes. Wilhelm working with a three-run lead. Last half of the seventh inning at San Diego Stadium. The 1-0 pitch, knuckleball gets through Haller, ball two, two balls and no strikes. The Dodgers got good pitching and relief from Alexander, two innings, one unearned run, and Moeller, two innings, no runs and no hits, and Joe struck out three while he was in there. Here's the pitch inside with the knuckleball. Three balls and no strikes to Gaspar. Sometimes when Wilhelm gets behind at this stage with a knuckleball, he will then come with a fastball. There's the fastball for a strike three and one. He doesn't throw too hard, but he has to throw it for strikes when he's behind. Three-one pitch on the way. Gaspar takes ball four. He's on with a walk to open the seventh inning last half. So Wilhelm gives up a walk, and here's the leadoff batter, Enzo Hernandez. Hernandez has gone 0 for 2 with a walk. Last half of the seventh inning in San Diego. The Dodgers scored four times in the top of the inning to take the lead, and now are in front by a score of 6 to 3 over the Padres. Knuckleball bunted third base way, and it goes foul. He was bunting for a base hit. Six thousand nine hundred and fifty is the crowd today, the the smallest of the three game series, and that's because of the heat. It's very warm today, and the fans that are here are back up under the stands, under the overhang, getting in the shade. They have a lot of shade coming on now. Just the box seats are in the sun. Wilhelm pitching to Hernandez, who backs out of the batter's box. 6-3. Now the stretch and the look and the pitch on the way. Knuckleball that's high, one ball and one strike. 1-1 one, one the count. Here again the look and the pitch. Ground ball to Wills. Down to second base, one. Lefebvre throw to first base in time, double play. So the double play pops up for the Dodgers for the second time today. Hernandez hitting a one-hopper to Wills. We might have neglected to tell you that Lefebvre was in there for Valentine when Bobby went out for a runner. Lefebvre, who had come in as a pinch hitter, stays in the game, and he's batting ninth, which means that Wilhelm is batting in uh, Valentine's spot. With two out now, here's Don Mason. He's had three hits, two singles and a double. He's driven in a run. So there are two outs in the seventh inning. Knuckleball is in for a strike, 0 and 1.
Pitch again, bounce wide to first base. Allen backs up for it. He'll take it to the bag himself, and the inning is over. Wilhelm gets him out. After a walk, a double play, and a ground out. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left on, and the score at the end of seven. Dodgers six, Padres three. Schlitz, Milwaukee in the world. Goodman's September Stretch Drive Special Souvenir Bargain Package. Five items, two dollars sent to Danny Goodman, Dodgers, Los Angeles, 9012. This offer available by mail only. A Dodger scarf, a Dodger yearbook, a package of 20 Dodger pictures, 12 National League Club pennants, and a 10th anniversary Dodger Stadium plaque, all for two dollars. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. The good son. K-T-A-R, Phoenix. Mike Corkins will be the new pitcher now for San Diego. This will be his fourth appearance of the year since being recalled from the minors. Right-hander, forming up now. He will be the third pitcher used by San Diego. Arnold went out, relieved by Caldwell, and they hit for him. Six runs off Arlen, and three were earned. So Mike Corkins, C-O-R-K-I-N-S. He's been up a couple of times at San Diego, 1969 and 1970. He has a record of six wins and nine losses in the big league so far. He's from Riverside, same town to spawn Bobby Bonds. He served up Willie May's 600th home run here at San Diego. All right, Richie Allen at bat now as we go to play in the eighth. Mike Corkins, the new pitcher. Dodgers leading 6-3 to three and trying to get a few more on the scoreboard before they board the plane and fly to San Francisco and uh, meet the Giants head on again. Dodgers swept them in the Dodger Stadium, of course, and almost have to do it again now in San Francisco. Allen, a half swing on a breaking ball, takes it low, one ball, no strikes. The Dodgers are 5-2 and two in Candlestick Park this year. 5-4 and four in Dodger Stadium against the Giants. The 1-0 pitch to Allen is a breaking ball outside and low ball two. Richie looking for his first hit of the game. The Dodgers have six. Garvey has two of them, and he got a key hit in the seventh inning. Single right after Crawford had opened up with a walk. 2-0 to count to Allen, hitting 295. Fastball is high, ball free. Right under Mike Corkins. On deck is Crawford, then Garvey. Three balls, no strikes. Here's the pitch. Too high, Allen is on with a walk to begin the eighth inning. The fourth walk the Dodgers have received, three were given up by Arlen. Here's Willie Crawford coming up now. Well, he walked, struck out, grounded out. The walk was a big one. It began a big inning. Takes the first pitch outside, ball one. Six runs, six hits, three errors for the Dodgers. Three runs, nine hits, and one error for San Diego. And the Dodgers are trying to sweep the Padres in this park. That would be a first for them. There's a high bouncer towards short. Hernandez goes back, goes to second base in time. And Allen is out on a close play as he slides hard into Mason and ties him up, and there's no further play. So Hernandez to Mason for the put out there and Crawford on the force. And here is Garvey at bat. He's two for three. 
Garvey singled to right both times. Popped up his first time at bat. Garvey learning to go with the pitch. He has been a keen student of batting instructor Dixie Walker. All right, waiting is Garvey. On at first, Crawford. See if they put a play on now with one out. And Garvey's been showing that he can go to right field. They might put hit and run on. Throw to first, a lob over there, and Crawford is back. Mike Corkins doing the pitching. Fastball is in for a strike. 0 and 1. Owen one to Garvey. Crawford again away from first base. Tom Haller is on deck. Here's the pitch again. And they pitch out on a throw to first base not in time. So the Padres figure the Dodgers might put the play on. Barton call for the pitch out, but they're not going. Tomorrow night's pitchers, Bill Singer and Juan Marisol. Downing and Perry in the second game on Tuesday. That'll be the final meeting of the year between the two teams. 1-1 one, one pitch, Garvey, a half swing, and he misses, strike two. One and two to Steve. He really didn't go all the way through that time. His heart wasn't in it. So one and two count to Garvey. The Dodgers got things going in the fifth, fifth inning when pinch hitter Bill Sudeikis doubled against the right field wall to drive in Garvey and Valentine. Here's a curve low for a ball, and the count is two and two. The Dodgers at the time were three to nothing behind. And looked like they were in for a long afternoon. But they got the two runs then and then came back with four more in the seventh inning and have turned it around to lead six to three. Crawford on first, a 2 2 count now to Garvey. Steve at the moment hitting 236. Now it's 2 2, still up there. Pitch on the way to Garvey. High ball free, three and two. We'll see now if they run with Crawford. Crawford has pretty good speed. Garvey doesn't strike out a great deal. So they might have him going here. Crawford moves away. 3-2 count with one out and Haller waiting next. There he goes. Pitches ball. A strike free call. The throw down is on a bounce. And Garvey can't believe that he's called out on strikes. And something else is going on on this play. umpire Doug Harvey has also called another out here comes the second base umpire in, uh, Donatelli to tell Harvey something as Tom Haller comes up to argue now we'll find out what this is about Garvey was called out on strike and they I think are going to call Garvey out for interfering with Barton's throw to second base and that means that Crawford is called out that's what it's going to be and the Dodgers are going to argue that uh, Garvey stepped across the plate and interfered with Barton's throw it was a bad throw to the right, and they're going to rule that uh, the runner is out also on the interference by the hitter. Garvey thought it was ball four and started to go to first base. Harvey calls strike three, and Harvey now is demonstrating to Alston, Gilliam, to Haller, and to Ozark that he said he's out for stepping out in front of the catcher who was throwing to second, and the inning is over. So that's what it'll be. A double play, and the inning is over. The Dodgers are down in the top of the eighth inning. Garvey out on strikes. And he interfered with the catcher, and therefore Crawford, the base runner, is out. So the side retired in the eighth inning, no runs, no hits, none left, and the score at the end of seven and a half innings of play, the Dodgers six and the Padres three. Some ball players make a specialty of collecting hits. As for Farmer John, he collects medals. I mean, all the gold medals he wins year after year at the California State Fair. And this year is no exception. The results have just come in from the 1971 fair, and of 14 Farmer John products entered, all 14 won gold medals. 14 out of 14. No other Packer came close to winning so many. Of course, it stands to reason that Farmer John would be such a big winner because his pork and pork products are not only fresh, but strictly fresh. Most Packers, you see, ship their eastern pork in frozen or cold storage. But this pork isn't fresh enough for Farmer John. He brings the porkers out here live. The meat's U.S. inspected and dressed fresh right here in the West. So it's no wonder that Farmer John is the only fresh pork ever to win a gold medal at the California State Fair. Reason enough to insist on Farmer John fresh pork and pork products 
when you shop your favorite market. Keep that name front and center. Farmer John. All right, to the bottom of the eighth inning, and after a weird ending to the top of the eighth inning, when Garvey took strike three called and thought he had uh, ball four, stepped across the plate, and as Crawford was running on the three two pitch, he interfered with Bob Barton's throw, and the runner is out too for the obstruction by the hitter. So Garvey out on strikes and Crawford out because of the interference. We'll get the put out and the assist for you. There's a curveball bounced off third base, rolling down the line. Garvey lets it go foul. So John Jeter leading it off in the eighth inning. Fouls one away. He has one hit a double. It is six to three. The Dodgers lead. We're playing in the bottom of the eighth inning. The catcher's going to get two put outs. So make it the K2 double play. Rather strange when you don't see that very often. All right, Jeter waiting. That means two double plays for each side today. Here's Wilhelm's knuckleball, butted and missed strike two. The Padres press figure that knuckleball is tough enough to solve, so they're trying to butt it. Jeter has fouled off two. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Dodgers leading the Padres six to three. Trying to sweep them here in San Diego. Then on to Candlestick for another big collision with the Giants. We hope you'll be with us tomorrow evening. Form of time 7.40 on KFI, the Dodger Radio Network, and on Channel 11 KTTV. Here's a swing and a miss, a knuckleball, pops out of Haller's glove, goes after it, throws to first base in time, and Jeter is out. So Jeter is out, strikes out, and Haller throws him out. So Wilhelm gets his first strikeout, and here's Nate Colbert at bat. He has two for three. Osteen began the day for the Dodgers, worked two innings, gave up two hits, and had to come out in the third. Claude's been feeling sick lately, so he was not too strong, and he gave up six hits and came out. Alexander worked two innings, allowed one unearned run and two hits, and then Joe Moeller worked two innings and allowed no runs. There's a ground ball to second. Lefevre out on the outfield grass, throws him out, and it's still away. So two down here in the eighth inning, and Clarence Gaston will be the batter. He has double played, struck out, and flied to right. The Dodgers have had a couple of key hits in the game, a pinch double by Lefevre in the fifth inning to get them their first two runs, and then they had a key single by Garvey and another by Valentine in the seventh inning to get an inning going, and then Buckner drove in a base, uh, single to left field to get another run in. A pass ball had allowed a run. Here's the pitch now to Gaston. Fast ball is high. One ball, no strikes. Two outs in the eighth inning. The Padres batting and the Dodgers lead six to three. They've used four pitchers. Knuckler is a strike. One and one. Hosting Alexander Moeller and now Wilhelm trying to go three. Hoyt Wilhelm. The one one pitch. Swung on a missed. Good knuckleball dancing across the outside part of the plate. One ball, two strikes. Wilhelm, who had began throwing the knuckleball when he was about 15 years old. So he's been throwing that thing a long time. Knuckler swung on and missed. Caught by Haller. Strike three. The side is retired. The Padres go down in order as Wilhelm gets two strikeouts. So we've gone through eight innings here in San Diego. Vin Scully along with more play when we go to the ninth. The score, the Dodgers six, the Padres three. Chevrolet has a suggestion for you drivers who spend more time behind the wheel of a car than most. You business or special drivers who log better than 15,000 miles a year. Spend that time comfortably in a 1971 Chevrolet Impala. You'll enjoy the roominess of Impala, the car that Automotive Industries magazine proved to be roomiest in its field. You'll appreciate Impala's new fan-operated ventilation system, which automatically and constantly changes the inside air. You'll relax in the added quiet that Impala's new double-panel roof helps provide, and since you're quite likely safety-minded, too, keep in mind Impala's side guard beams and energy-absorbing steering column, two important benefits. So if driving a car for you is part of your business, make it a pleasure. Select a 1971 Chevrolet Impala before that next 15,000 miles rolls around. And here's an idea you can live with. Buckle up both your seat and shoulder belts. Benning and the Dodgers leading the Padres 6-3. to three. We now bring radio and television together. And the last inning, a simulcast to allow Jerry to get a chance to get downstairs and get set up for the postgame show. 
So we'll be jabbering a little more than usual now as far as the TV side is concerned. Ninth inning, six runs, six hits, and three errors for the Dodgers. One of the three errors meant a run. The Padres, three runs, eight hits, one error, and that error meant a run. In fact, that error meant two runs. It would have been the third out back in the fifth inning. They were two on, and Bill Sudeikis came off as a pinch hitter and doubled home to, got the Dodgers back in the game, and they've gone on now to take a rather commanding lead, 6-3. Mike Corkins pitching the ninth inning to Tommy Haller, then Hoyt Wilhelm and Jim Lefevre. Wilhelm hitting eighth, and according to law, has to come out in the on-deck circle. Haller takes a strike. Leo DeRocher on a hot day like that would not have Wilhelm out on the dugout. He would have a fella kneeling down there who could be a pinch hitter. Here's the strike one pitch. Haller swings and misses. Leo puts a, a decoy out there in the on-deck circle so his pitcher doesn't have to stay in the heat. And he gets away with it. Of course, the baseball really wanted to close up the loophole that would make the pitcher and the pinch hitter kneel in the on-deck circle. The strike two pitch that bounced it down to second baseman Don Mason and Don throws out Haller one away. Now Hoyt Wilhelm coming up. The Dodgers have used Osteen, Alexander, Moeller, and Wilhelm. Wilhelm trying to save this one. Joe Moeller is the pitcher of record. For Wilhelm, it would be his second save and it would be Mola's first victory of the year. Hoyt swings, doesn't get the first one. 0-1. Oh okay. 0-1 oh to count to Hoyt. Fastball is a little low. 1-1. One one. The Padre used Arlen, Caldwell, and Corkins. When the Padres hit in the bottom of the ninth, they have Morrell, Barton, and Dean. Mike into the windup, and the 1 1 pitch swung on and missed, 1 and 2. One and two the count. Jimmy Lefevre on deck. The pitch to Wilhelm is fouled away, so Hoyt is still out there. One and two to count. Dodgers need three more outs to hang three back of the Giants. The Dodgers were three and a half back on the 6th of July, three and a half back on the 12th of August, but three back, that's as close as they've been since the very early going in April. Fouled off and it's still one and two. So, boy, the stage is sure set for that confrontation tomorrow night. Bill Singer and Juan Marichal. And Tuesday night, Al Downing and Gaylord Perry. One-two pitch to Wilhelm. Fastball drilled in there. Strike three called, and that'll do it for Hoyt. Two down in the ninth inning. Now, Jimmy Lefevre trying to give Wilhelm at least a couple of moments in the shadows of the dugout. Wilhelm has just about gone back in and Lefevre went back in for a moment to consume a little time. Now Jimmy will take plenty of time before he climbs in. So two down in the ninth. Six to three Dodgers. Lefevre had a key base hit as a pinch hitter the other night. He was walked intentionally as a pinch hitter today, and then stayed in when Valentine came up with the bad leg. The pitch of the fever inside, ball one. That might be a tough break. Valentine, although just learning to play second base, has been swinging a good hot bat. And it would hurt for Valentine to be out with the upcoming Giants series. We won't know anything about it until tomorrow. 2-0 the count of Jimmy Lefevre. Valentine suffered either a pull or a muscle spasm, a cramp, we're not sure, high up on the right leg. The 2-0 pitch, Lefevre fouled away. Valentine hurt himself in the seventh inning. He singled to center field. The throw went to third. Bobby took off for second and made it safely, but he was hurt. Eventually gave way to Don Sutton to run. So Valentine's immediate future is a little questionable. 
Two and one to Jim Lefevre. Two out, ninth inning, six to three Dodgers. Mike Corkins, the third San Diego pitcher, sends a fastball. It's grounded to Colbert. Big hop, but he stayed with it. Brings it to the bag, and the Dodgers are gone in the ninth. So at the end of eight and a half innings, Dodgers six, Padres three. To be good at anything, really good, you usually find it takes two things, training and spirit. And there's a fellow in your neighborhood who has the best of both. Your Union 76 certified serviceman. He's a real pro with real professional training, too, because for each certified service stripe he wears on his arm, he's had special training at Union Certified Service Training School. Up to six weeks of concentrated, specialized study for each stripe he wears. Look for the stripes he wears. Brakes, wheel alignment, tune-ups, air conditioning. If he's wearing the stripe, you know he's a pro. And he has great spirit, too. He's proud of the job he can do, and you can trust him to do it right. Because that's what Union Certified Service is all about. So next time your car needs servicing, take it to your Union 76 certified service man. And you'll like his spirit. The spirit of 76 lives at Union Oil. To the bottom of the ninth inning in this simulcast from San Diego Stadium, the Giants won their game in Atlanta 6-1. to one. The Dodgers are trying to win their ball game here in San Diego and remain three back for the big meeting starting tomorrow night. For San Diego, it'll be Ivan Morrell, Bob Barton, and Tommy Dean. For San Diego, this has been a most disappointing series. In fact, the first thing to greet the Dodgers when they arrived here was the note that it was in 1969 in September when the Padres swept a four-game series from the Dodgers to knock them out of the pennant race. And you know that everybody in and around San Diego thinking that they would like to do it again, even more so since the Dodgers had won every game here. But the Dodgers playing great ball right now. And they came in to take the first two, and they've come from behind to take a 6-3 to three lead today. Ivan Morrell has fouled out, flied to center, and struck out. Right hand hitting left fielder, 0 for 3. And a wobbler comes high, ball 1, 1 and 0. Dodgers have Allen, Lefevre, Wills, and Garvey. Crawford, Davis, and Buckner in the outfield. Haller is behind the plate handling Wilhelm, who misses again, ball 2. Hoyt has worked two innings. He has faced only six men. He has walked one and struck out two. The 2-0 pitch on the way to Morrell. Over for strike, 2-1. and one. Back of Wilhelm is Jim Brewer, throwing in the Dodger bullpen just in case Hoyt might wobble. The 2-1 pitch coming up. Foul back, 2-2. Two and two. The Dodger bullpen is quite a laboratory these days with Wilhelm's knuckleball, Brewer's screwball, Pena's forkball, Mickelson's palm ball. The greatest advice still ever given to any catcher as to how to handle a knuckleball belonged to Bob Euchre. The 2-2 two -two pitch, knuckler got him swinging. The third strikeout for Hoyt Wilhelm. Bob Euchre said, the only way to catch a knuckleball is to wait for it to stop rolling and then pick it up. Now that's as good as anything we've ever heard. Here's Bob Barton. Single, fly to shadow line to right. One for three. Wilhelm ready and comes to Barton inside. Ball one. So Wilhelm an ex-giant. Barton an ex-giant. Haller an ex-giant. One ball and no strikes to count. Wilhelm's next one over for a strike, one and one. The Padres do not have a hit since Mason sliced that double in the fourth inning. Here's the one-one pitch on the way. Knuckler swung on and missed one and two. Wilhelm has struck out three. One and two to Bob Barton. Leron Lee. Left-hand batter out on deck. Here comes the knuckler high. Tommy Haller uses the waffle mitt 
It's Wilhelms. Hoyt brings it wherever he goes. It's an oversized catch as with most of the padding taken out. When Duke Sims catches Wilhelm, he catches him with a first baseman's glove. Knuckleball is dropped by Haller after it was swung on, but the out is still recorded at first, and that's four strikeouts for Hoyt Wilhelm. So Haller waited till it stopped rolling and picked it up. Two down and LaRon Lee coming up. Four strikeouts for Wilhelm. LaRon Lee hitting for Tommy Dean. Leron Lee set a Padres club mark the other night against Cincinnati. He went five for five. Left hand hitter formerly with the Cardinals. Wilhelm trying to get him and end it now. And the first one, a strike, and <laughs> it's dropped by Tommy, who has to go after it. Boy, that thing is really bobbing and weaving. It was Jim Gilliam in talking about Wilhelm's knuckleball back in 53. He nicknamed it the Dancer. The strike one, Knuckler, 0-2, swung on and missed. So little did we know back in 53 that someday Gilliam would be a coach and Wilhelm would be pitching for the Dodgers. But it has come to pass. Here's the strike two pitch now to Leron Lee. Knuckler fouled away. and figures that's all Lee's going to see. Wilhelm has struck out four. He has struck out three in a row. And four of the last five men he has faced. So he needs one more strike, and the Dodgers sweep the boards clean in San Diego. The Giants are flying home from Atlanta right now. The Dodgers will go to San Francisco tonight. Knuckler outside. One and two the count. Padres led in this game three to nothing, but the Dodgers caught them and passed them 6-3. Wilhelm reading Haller, and he comes right back one, two. And a knuckleball is hit wide at first to Richie Allen. He underhands to Wilhelm, and that's that. The Dodgers hang tough. They were down three to nothing, but they beat the Padres, and their numbers continue to get more impressive. The Dodgers have beaten San Diego nine straight. They won all nine here. The Dodgers have won six in a row. That's their longest streak of the year. It's the second time they've done that. And the club has now won the last 11 of 13. So the Dodgers are playing hot ball. And they'll go head-to-head -head again with the Giants tomorrow night. And a reminder, you can see it all right here on Channel 11 KTTV and listen to it all on KFI and the Dodger Radio Network tomorrow night. The totals on the ballgame for the Dodgers, six runs, eight hits, three errors. For the Padres, three runs, eight hits, and one error. The winning pitcher, Joe Moeller, his first victory of the year, a save for Hoyt Wilhelm. And the losing pitcher is Steve Arlen. He's 9-17, and 0-2 oh with the Dodgers, and 0-3 oh lifetimes. Remember, at Candlestick, it's an 8 p.m. game, Monday and Tuesday night. And the pitchers involved, Bill Singer and Juan Marichal, Monday night. Al Downing and Gaylord Perry on Tuesday night. And warm-up time will be at 7.40. So once again, the final score of the ballgame, the Dodgers 6 and the Padres 3.